the coolest car there by I, I was like gobsmacked by it was um, there was an E Type. And it was uh, Jensen Button was driving it. Oh, I saw I saw on his Instagram. Yeah, and, Adrian, and it's owned by Adrian Newey. Adrian right? Newey's son was driving it. And yeah. Adrian Newey uh, worked on it. Let's say, and so you look at it, you're like, that's the coolest looking E Type. And then you see it next to another E Type, you're like, that's not even shaped like an E Type. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking like oh. Holman Moodied the. Oh, uh, he, he smoky <laughs> unit. He smoky unit. He smoky unit. Uh, like like it's a seven eighth scale e type actually uh, I don't, it's just wildly differently shaped and like it like a lot of these guys they'll pop the the trunk up like uh-huh. an inch for a spoiler effect if you look at his it's uh it's also then like uh, filled in it's got so like the, a lip. There's, there's no air going into the trunk you know <laughs> yeah, what i mean it's, yeah. it's sectioned and like if you look at his exhaust it is like Oh my god, that's the sexiest side exhaust I've ever seen. You look at all the other E types. It's just yeah. like a, a pipe that ends. That's fucking cool. So, as hell. but my, my friend, I'm like, I'm like, where are you gonna finish? And he's like, Well, my car is stock. He's racing a Cobra. He's like, So we would be sixth, but we're gonna be seventh because of this fucking cheater car. <laughs> and I go, What's what about it? He's like, Look at it for a while. And I'm like, That's really nice. He's like, Look at the name on the side. I'm like, A Nui. I'm like, Oh, like because his kid's name is not Adrian, but something like that. I was like, Jensen, but so Jensen Button driving it. Yeah. Uh, I I can't remember how much they were ahead, but it was like it was like twenty seconds ahead. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Banks Power, who have the all new pedal monster to show off. This thing is really cool. It's got a kind of a funny name, the pedal monster, but it actually describes pretty accurately what it does. You know, when you take your car in to get an aftermarket ECU tune, in some cases they really are adding power, but in a lot of ways what they're doing is reprogramming your pedal, just the pedal response itself to deliver power in a different way. And the pedal monster allows you to decide how you want your pedal to deliver power. It can instantly improve throttle response in hundreds of cars and trucks. It's the only OBD connected throttle controller. Other co- throttle controllers go through the pedal itself, which can cause all kinds of problems with voltage drop, etc. And it's got an app you can connect to the Pedal Monster, and you can choose your basic city, sport, and track modes. And then there's 10 unique pedal maps within those for 30 total sensitivity levels. You can change it in real time. You can't change it like while you're, you have to take your foot off the pedal to change it, but you can change it like while you're driving very easily. You can't change it in the middle of a pull, let's just say. And just so you know, when you put your car in reverse, You don't want the pedal to be super sensitive like if it was on a racetrack, right? So they have a patented system called reverse safety, which returns the pedal effort and the pedal response to stock when you go to reverse. So you don't have any accidental issues there, right? And they have an adjustable speed trim feature, which allows you to remove the added pedal sensitivity below 10 miles an hour so your car doesn't get super jerky and jumpy, right? If you've got a trailer or you're a sports car, you don't want it to be super jerky uh, in traffic or off off idle, right? Which is also great for manual transmission cars. It's really, really cool. The active safety mode can return the module to stock in the event of an internal external malfunction. The app works on iPhone and Android. And all you have to do to see if the pedal monster works for you, again, hundreds of cars and trucks, is go to bankspower.com. That's bankspower.com. Power.com and enter the year making model of your vehicle. Get one for yourself. These guys have been doing this for a long time. We love Gale Banks. Great engineer, great team, and the Pedal Monster is their latest innovation. It's very, very cool. So go to bankspower.com, enter your year make and model, and see if it works for you. Also brought to you today by HelloFresh. Love HelloFresh. You know why? Love cooking, hate shopping. Love eating, hate deciding what to eat, right? So with HelloFresh, you can save money, you can save time, you can eat healthy, and it takes the worst parts of preparing food off the menu, right? All you got to do is go 
to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire65, right? You choose the menu that you want for this week, right? There's 30 plus wet recipes every week. You can do vegetarian, you can do the chef specials, you can do quick and easy. Um, it's um, so many different options. You can even customize your meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading the choice proteins or adding proteins to a vegetarian dish. There's so many options. And then HelloFresh sends you fresh ingredients, spices and sauces to your door along with, uh, they're all pre-portioned along with the recipes to make them quickly. And then you put them in the fridge one at a time, boom, you got dinner. You get home from work, no shopping, right? You just pull it out of the fridge and there's everything you need to make dinner. You can do it in about 30 minutes, 40 minutes like tops, but it's way, way easier and less time than going to the store, figuring out what to make. I like it because I don't have to either think about making something new and figure it out on the fly or default to my standard five or six things that I make regularly. It keeps me making new stuff. HelloFresh is now offering vegan recipes on the menu every week without animal products of any kind. And uh, changing seasons mean changing tastes. And with those 30 plus recipes to choose from, you can get something new every week. I love it. Saves time, saves money, saves food waste, and I'm trying new flavors at home. So, HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire65 and use code SmokingTire65 for 65% off plus free shipping. You got that? You got to use the, the URL and the code. You HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire65, code SmokingTire65, 65% off plus free shipping. It's America's number one meal kit, and don't you forget it. Last but not least, RexMD, baby. Guys hate going to the doctor. You got to plan it well ahead. Takes half a day. And there's also certain topics you don't want to talk to your regular doctor about. And here's what I'm talking about. Boner pills, baby. Most men's health issues have really simple solutions, and RexMD is all about that. They make getting generic and branded Viagra and Cialis easy. Everything's online, even the prescription delivered right to your door. No office visits, no receptionist. It's super simple. Just fill out a quick medical questionnaire on their website. A doctor will review it and prescribe you generic Viagra. If appropriate, your medication gets shipped right to your door with free two-day shipping. It's fast, simple, and cheap, and you can access your U.S. licensed RexMD physician anytime you need afterwards. RexMD has helped over 300,000 guys get generic Viagra quickly and convenient, and RxM, uh, RexMD just works, and it works the very first night. Starter packs of generic Viagra or Cialis are available for our viewers, but you've got to go to rexmd.com slash tire to get started. That's rexmd.com slash tire. Go to rexmd.com slash tire today to get started with a starter pack prescription of generic Viagra or Cialis, and all orders come with free two-day shipping. RexMD, the authority in men's health. Uh, folks, on today's episode, Johnny Lieberman is back in studio. Motherfucker pesters me every week about getting in here. We're going to taste some whiskey that I brought back from Scotland. Johnny has been to England to drive the Lotus Amira, and he will give us his review of that. He's also been to Goodwood. But because I'm recording this intro before we're doing the show, I have no idea where it will lead, so you and I can find out together. Motor Trends Johnny Lieberman on the Smoke and Tire podcast. Chaim. L'chaim. L'chaim. Happy Yom Kippur. Nice Happy Yom yeah. Kippur. We're being very good Jews it's, today. It's called Nidre. You know, we're drinking scotch. This is the Lindores, which I think is how it's pronounced, which it, 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 I brought back from uh, Scotland. I haven't tasted it. I didn't taste it there, and I just bought it because it was ma- I was in the town that where the distillery is, and they sold it in a store, and so Have, here we go. Okay, yeah. Not bad. Definitely scotch. It's definitely scotch. Yeah. Do you I mean, follow? Nice. Yeah. It's kind of good. It's a lot soft. of tastes. There's a it's, lot of different it's tastes. It's flavorful. Yes. Not as um, peaty as other ones I've had. Which I don't is, like peaty. I, I, I told them I don't like the peaty and I don't like it super smoky. And this seems 
right in the middle. PD's PD's pretty gross. Are, are, do you follow that Instagram woman? She does all she does on her Instagram is Scotch pronunciation. <laughs> it's hysterical. Like like she's no. She's, Wait, is she Scottish or is she? She's Scottish. Oh, and I gotta she's follow this right rich. now. Rich. I don't know her the name That's, of it. That sounds like a good Instagram and gig. She has like one of those hidden you know whiskey bars in her house, uh-huh. and it's just like a library, literally with a, sl- a ladder on wheels. Yeah, yeah. And and her Instagram is just twenty second videos where she pulls down a bottle. And you look at it and you think it's like Brook Lach, and then she's like Brook Laddis, yeah, Brook Laddis, and that's the video. That's it's great. great. Yeah, it's fucking great. It's fantastic. Now you drank some unpronounceable shit, oh. and I sent the picture to Zach, <laughs> and he go, and it was it was the real way to pronounce it was the Bonahaven. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure you're familiar with Bonahaven. Yeah, I've seen it, but I it's, thought it was pronounced like something much different. Zach, I sent Zach the picture, and he goes, "Is that pronounced like you'd sing the Batman theme song, like a banana?" <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> it was delicious. Yeah, very, very good. I mean, hey, when scotch is good, it's it's pretty damn good. Well, that's this, that that scotch bar I went to in um in that hotel was epic with Angus, the fucking guy who was like who knew who I was, and he was like, "I'm gonna give you some shit that makes Johnny jealous," and I was like, "Here we go." <laughs> so that was pretty cool because like I'm pretty much over scotch. I'm a total bourbon dork. However. A couple of the ones you, I didn't know all of them, but a couple of the ones you've sent me, I've read Pretty about epic. or seen or had, yeah. and like, yeah, those those are some good stuff. They haven't gotten me out of bourbon, but when yeah. in Scotland, hey, and, and I learned right. about single grain, yes. which I didn't really know about before. And single grain is the most bourbon like of the scotches. Yes, the it's slut- very it's good. the sluttiest of the grains. <laughs> it, was. <laughs> it was very fucking good. Yeah, the single grain oh, was delicious. Hey, and I've. Sp- like I think I, we talked about this. I've been to the the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Yes, in in London, where they just pick barrels from every single distillery that participates in Scotland, and they just you know they'll take a barrel and they'll age it themselves and they'll try it at fourteen and a half years and that's when they bottle it. Yeah, and it's so good. We, I drank two of those. I sent yeah. you a photo of yeah. the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Yeah. And like, and the other thing, the best thing about them is the labels. Mm-hmm. Is once you've had about four or five drinks, then that kind of poetry makes a lot of sense. Because <laughs> they have these great, mis- it's like tastes like magic mushrooms and children's <laughs> medication, and you're like, yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah. So, so but, anyways, but yeah. considering I literally bought this in a gift shop from a town I was in. Not fucking Pretty bad. Smooth. I like yeah. it. Not it's, it's fucking bad. Very drinkable. If, Go yes. indoor. That's a lot of my... scotch I've had is aggressive. Yeah, like hard to get down. Oh, like yeah. the the Lagavulin we had was yeah. like drinking a campfire. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> campfire jet fuel. Yeah. Have you had the Lagavulin that's like in the quarter cast cask? I don't think so. So basically, instead of being in a fifty-four gallon hogshead, they put it in one that's a quarter that size. Uh-huh. So the uh, surface area even to more wood. wood. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just it, it somehow just makes it peatier. It's yeah. it's crazy. Very aggressive yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the Lafroy, not the Lugvul. Oh, the Lafroy quarter oh, okay. cask. Sorry, but right. you know what I mean. It's just like yeah. It's it's too much. It's too much. But when you, I mean, like anything, you know, when you've got someone who's so knowledgeable there to go, and this is, this one is special for this, and this, you all of a sudden, you're like, yes, of course it is, you know, you know. But also, like, wouldn't it be cool to have, like, bourbon bars like that in L.A.? Where there, the bartenders there are some. actually know they, something? They have, they have a couple. Is, is Old Lightning not that? Was that the one in Venice? Old Lightning is the one in Venice. I haven't, the Italian I haven't restaurant. been because for me it's hard to go to. Yeah, I have to. So. That one is very special, and they make yeah. you check your phone at the door. Oh, that's you can't my bring kind of your place. fucking oh, phone. Are you in serious? There. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. I brought, I went there with some chefs, and uh, I went there with Carl. Uh, Chef Aaron May and Chef Mark Murphy. We I took them there, and they were all like looking through the menu, like what the fuck? It was cr- it was wild. Yeah, because like you like it. There's a place I could name, which I won't, but I went, and the bartenders are just so full of shit. I'm like, really, the best thing you have is a cast finished Angel's Envy, like not these obviously much better bottles, and obviously they're being paid to push it. Yeah. Um, or like my buddy's restaurant Providence, which is like has one of the best bourbon selections, but you're paying not only 
crazy bourbon prices, but then Providence is a, yeah. a fancy restaurant. Yeah, yeah. And you know. one of the more interesting things about that whiskey room in Scotland was that they had some stuff. They, like they did have like Blantons actually, sure. and but they had. Oh, you washed the floors with this. I, I was like, <laughs> I, I was, I was seriously like, what is the most mainstream shit you've got? Right. And they're like, well, we have some special versions of mainstreams. So they had the Frank Sinatra blend Jack oh, Daniels. Yeah, that's supposed which to be is a, good. Which I tasted it. It was very good. Okay. I guess old fucking Blue Eyes liked his Jack so much, they let him pick his own barrels, and then they made uh, a, a, a variant based on his picks. So I haven't had it, but I get all the PR for all the bourbon stuff. And I remember when that came out, and I was like, this is bullshit. And then a, f- a friend of mine who just drinks everything, he's like, actually, it was really good. <laughs> and like, j- like, there's Gentleman Jack that's yeah, yeah. delicious. Yeah. You know, regular Jack Daniels, is re- it's just what it is. You know, it's for guzzling on stage when you're doing a drum solo. But <laughs> yeah. it, like, th- you know, like any <laughs> distillery, they, they do do good yeah. stuff. They yeah. just, you know, they have a a price point they're bottling to right, right. for the most part. Yeah. So. But uh, I, I was surprised by that. And by the way, if you haven't listened to it, the new dollop about Frank Sinatra's 1974 tour of Australia is a fucking epic. Frank Sinatra, it turns out, complete fucking lunatic. Oh, 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 yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Especially by the 70s. Yeah, there it is, the Sinatra Select. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever if you ever see it, it's uh, it's worth a taste. Actually, kind of interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, I will I will check it out because, like I said, this guy that I I trust a lot was like, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so. um, is that the guy you asked when I when I had found those bottles? I found I found a couple of bottles at my my in laws place that went back to like the sixties. We're yeah. cleaning out my wife's childhood bedroom, and she's like, I must have snuck this off in high school. <laughs> and it was like some shit from the sixties. Yeah. Like, no, he wasn't one of them. This. Was, I asked two guys that are in the buying and selling of, of whiskey business, <laughs> and both of them were just like. And the one guy, I could, I could tell. How do I put this? He didn't want to be a dick. He, no, no, reverse. He's such a crook oh. that if it was valuable, he would have told me it was worth nothing, so I'd sell it to him. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. And and because he did that to me one time, where I was like, "How much is this bottle worth?" He's like, "Oh, that one. Yeah, now nah, that one. No one likes that one. That's like." You know, not. I think he wanted. He said he gave me fifteen hundred. I sold it for forty three hundred, <laughs> and he knew it. He damn well knew it. That's so, funny. Yeah. No, he, I think so. he, he came back with. Uh, I texted Johnny about this bottle. Who asked the guy? And he came back with like I don't know three or three or four hundred dollars. Yeah. It was. It wasn't anything like insane, but it was just old and unopened and kind of neat. Yeah. Did and you Did you drink it? Yeah, we opened it. We and? fucking drank it. It wasn't worth like selling. <laughs> it was okay. It was yeah. pretty good. Cool. Yeah. It was more of much more of a novelty than it was like, oh, the fucking flavors. But it was cool. I mean, that's what's amazing about it. that. Like Zuckerman, of all people, who, you know, is stone sober. Yeah. At his uh, Baldwin Hills house, he's got a bottle of uh, Prohibition era bourbon that was literally labeled as medicine mm-hmm. Whoa. made by, I forget the distillery. But you know, one of the distilleries where yeah. that's all they could make during Prohibition to stay in business. Yeah, and somebody gave it to him, and he's like, "Try it, try it," and it was good. It was yeah. like actually really tasty. My friend was in those bur- those Facebook groups, and yeah. he, he ended up with a bunch of that Prohibition shit. It, and he took some of it to Christie's, <sighs> and like eighteen <sighs> bottles of it, and like the Ooh. ten best bottles, he got he got like tens of thousands of dollars for it. Uh, that's crazy. And then yeah. the ones that were slightly below what Christie's wanted, he kept and fucking drank, and they were yeah. totally. Drinkable and good. That's, That's Dave. Yeah, yeah. Where did he get those from? Oh, just Some, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, someone in a Facebook group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I quit. They Facebook. did not know what they have. I, I quit Facebook, and I, I'm I, probably for oh, the best. It's so much better. But the only thing I regret is I was in all these really good whiskey clubs, mm-hmm. bourbon clubs, and I'm just I'm just out now. You Got to go back okay. to for, forums, right? You know where to find this stuff. Uh, well, well, I do and I don't. Like my my buddy, uh, the guy who owns Province, Michael, he um, he texted me last night. He's like, "Have you tried this?" And I'm like, "No, where'd you get it?" Is this new Willet? He's like, "Off Risky," which is uh, I shouldn't even mention it, but this is a Facebook group, mm. very private, limited to 500 members, blah blah. And I'm like, "Well, yep, I'll never never go there again." Yeah. Oh, well. So, but it's it's you know, have you amassed a collection yeah. that would last you a couple of lifetimes? So you're like, I don't really need to hunt around anymore or for you is it more about learning about it and just tasting shit um you know before i had a kid i would say it would have lasted like you know five years now with a kid it's going to last five lifetimes because yeah. i passed out on the couch at eight forty-five last night because <laughs> i was so exhausted mm-hmm. from one day i got back on uh you know sunday night 
I was home for one day and dealing with a kid for a few hours, like that done. was done. So yeah. there's no drinking anymore for me. This is it. I come here to drink. You you drink when you're on, in, traveling internationally as an automotive yes. Uh, yeah. personality. Yeah. And, yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. yes. I drink. Actually, this was rad. I was I was just in Spain with Audi. And we stayed near um, Ascari, uh-huh. and uh, it was pretty. You'd like this part. So, uh, 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 the the head of Audi PR for the U.S. didn't go for a variety of reasons. We going to send this other guy, Steve or Stephen, and Stephen got real sick and didn't go. So we had no American PR. So they That's left us. That's a unique experience. They left us with the Germans. <laughs> Just which, go. And like, and imagine you know, like that. It was very odd. But anyways, one what of did the, you, what did you drive? The RS5 competition, oh. RS5 competition sportsback, and most importantly, RS4 competition. Oh, and uh, neat. yeah, baby, I'll tell you about the RS4 in a sec. But uh, the one of the German guys was like, at, at dinner, we had a beer, and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. You know, at Ascari, they had a nice little dinner for us. He's like, oh, if you like beer at the hotel, I'll get you some good local beer. And by local beer, he meant the dude, the bartender had like, like brewed it himself. I think his friend did, and it was like twelve like unlabeled green bottles. Oh wow, delicious, really good. Yeah, like it was like a Belgian style gold nail. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome, super cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah we had in cool. Germany a couple weeks ago. We had some home brew as well, and it was delightful. Really good at the at this la- Alpine Lake. I mean, it was fucking great. Yeah, I, I went. You know what else they do that's cool? In uh, I went with Mark from Audi. Uh, in uh, Neckersom, uh they had like there's a season where people s- can serve their homemade wine, uh-huh. and they just like do a lean to off the side of their house and put in picnic tables and like cook you spetzel and pasta. Like German porum. Yeah, and and uh, yeah. <laughs> but they but they serve just like these these like like homemade wine, and it was. Fantastic. There's really? like one variety of wine because yeah. that's all they made. Yeah. But it's, it's killer. They have like, like one grape in Germany. Yeah, that's it. Well, they had one grape at this, you know, Neckersalm in yeah. Austria, you know, but it was just some some people. Like, that rules. Like, it was awesome. Yeah. So RS4, RS5. Yeah. So this story? is, I'm going to, I'm going to split a hair here. So because you guys are, are part of this is going out live to some people and the embargo is tomorrow. How many people are fucking watching? I know. Hey man, I, this is, this it's is like, it's like 20. Yeah. It's like it, don't okay. worry about it. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll put the RS four tomorrow, but we're we're not getting the RS four. So, I know that's a yeah. bummer. Yeah, I'm surprised they let you drive it. They don't usually like letting people drive. There shit was that they no don't fucking... American <laughs> PR there. In fact, I was with Derek Powell, and we pretty much it was like ninety. Oh my pre- god, that's like the Audi yes. wagon guy of Audi wagon guy. If it was JF, there would have been <laughs> yeah. a fucking circle jerk around the RS four. <laughs> well, uh, Derek and I, I'd say ninety percent of our time was driving the uh, the RS four. Yeah, it was. We were we hogged it. No one else even touched it. Is there mechanically any difference between the Zero. three cars? It's the same Zero. same powertrain. Okay, Same cool. powertrain. And then, so the competition, I think the biggest news is they got rid of the dampers and, the you know, and their regular, like, you know, comfort sport dampers. They mm-hmm. got rid of those. They put in fully adjustable coilovers, kind of like what was on the M3 GTS, where, oh, like, there's... That's very aggressive. Yeah, so there's, like, you know, there's a tool to click the rebound down. Because everyone loves that. It's high, so good at it. High speed, low speed. Well, they were set up perfectly, <laughs> the one for Joe, but high speed, low speed yeah. compression. If you have access to an engineer to set it up for you, hey, it's great. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, they were in the Nordschleife setting, which oh. is which, okay. But it was it was Nordsch- The Leifa. road is the tarmac is great in Spain, isn't it? Right. So they yeah. were in Nordschleife uh, hard. Mm-hmm. So they have a hard and a soft. You know. Will you be jumping the Audi? Yes. Well, <laughs> I would have been. There was no jump. But uh, and then also, so you know, like uh, the ride height's ten millimeters lower. Okay. But there's a tool to drop it down another ten millimeter. If you oh want. wow. So, but but it was great. Like the the ride quality was like. It was just what I like, the way I like a car to feel, like where it's like it's like a tensed muscle, like mm. still has it's still soft, but it's not like unnecessary body movement. Sure, like if you if you hit a bump, it's over in one cycle. We drove the regular RS5 Sportback yeah. and the Coupe, yeah, and we found them to be generally very pleasant, but not life altering. Exactly. So that was their 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 brief design brief with this was like okay. You know, we're not going to increase horsepower. Um, we're going to keep this transmission, which is the ZF8 speed. But can you make it much more exciting? So, you know, they took out sound deadening, lighter uh-huh. wheels, better tires, totally different suspension, reworked ABS, carbon discs, different rear end, all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. And 
I, I thought the results were great. I mean, I've always – it's one of those things. Like, if you say, oh, what about versus the M3 competition? It's like, well, no, I mean, the M3 performs better. What about the Julia Quadrifoglio? No, that's going to be more fun to drive. But all that said, I always – I still love the RS5. I do, too. I thought it was great. Uh, yeah. It's not my it, favorite Audi. That's RS3. But, yeah. But it's, nice. it's a but, nice car. But I'd love to have one. I feel like they're kind one. of cousins. Like, they're – you know they're in the family, but they're very different from like the the M3 and the Alpha, which are going after the same lap time and trying to be as exciting as possible. Yeah. And the Audi's like, I'm quick, but I'm also an architect or an artist. I don't know. They're just they're just yeah. a little bit different. Think that's about fine. this coupe body style. I had an S5. Oh, that's good. Looking. In 2009, a- this is 13 years ago, and they're still making this body style. How well that body well, style that has bo- aged. That body style it goes back earlier because I remember I had one in like two thousand six or seven. I think seven might have been the yeah, first year, of and it. I remember it was gorgeous. And it's still, I mean, it's it's a it's the post facelift, but it's still fundamentally. The, yeah, this is the, the se- same. This is the second gen. This yeah, is the right. new because I think in two thousand seventeen was the second mm-hmm, gen came, mm-hmm. but but pretty close. Very close. They didn't make a whole lot of changes. Yeah, and anyways, but it's it's uh it's great. Like it's like it's you know it, it makes a little bit more noise because they got rid of some firewall sound deadening and the engine makes more over revs and mm-hmm. stuff. But they did some cool changes. Like if you put it in manual mode, the transmission it won't automatically upshift even if you're on a track and you run into redline. It'll- that see that's to me is like a given. Like that's how it should be. Well, it's, what's how otherwise? It wasn't. Otherwise, why is manual a thing? Well, so now if you want that, you pony it. It's like sixteen grand more, but you do get a lot. It's a lot. Know? And, and then we pushed them. We said, like, why not just add fifteen horsepower? You know, um, kind of like what BMW does with like mm-hmm. the you know the, from the M5 to the M5 Comp mm-hmm. it goes up. And the guys, he was very frank about it because there was no Americans there, and he said, look. He goes, to do that, that's about 5 million euros. Mm-hmm. And on top of every other You have to change, recertify the engine, emissions, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. crash maybe in some markets. But he said, like, you know, it, we're changing all this other stuff, which has a price tag. The car has to make X profit. And mm-hmm. so if we were to add more power, and by the way, you wouldn't really notice But you 15, don't have to recertify for suspension changes? And stuff like that. I or? guess not. Yeah, yeah I guess not. Yeah, yeah. but like because emissions are just, and but but it, also it's Volkswagen, so right. They're so nervous about emissions, of course. You know, so but you why? Know, like, <laughs> and, and, and like, like would fifteen horsepower made a difference? Nah. Would a hundred? Yes. Like, like it could yeah. use a hundred. You know, more. The fu- it's the funny thing about fifteen horsepower is now that you bring it up, it's like. You you can't feel it, right? Like it's not enough where you can feel it, right? And it's it's such a small difference that you're almost insulted by it, like yeah, you might as well just fucking say it's the same. It would like, only make a difference in marketing materials because it's numerically higher than right, the last right, number, but right. then you'd see it and go, well, who cares? Yeah, yeah. and I like, can't that's feel a this. Conundrum. I, yeah. And the point they brought up was like, well, what 15 horsepower would drop a tenth of a second in acceleration. And they're like, by retuning the transmission and the and the rear we end and make the tires, that up elsewhere. it does point yeah. one seconds quicker. Uh. Hmm. And I was like, well, if you did both, it'd be point two. You know, but <laughs> yeah. but like like I told him, like you know, because we drove it on a Scari, which is you know just what a bitch and track. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, like I still like, private. Yeah, oh, still n- private. Track. New owner. I'll tell you about the owner in a second. <laughs> uh, uh, you're gonna like this new owner, but. Um, I was like, yeah, my only thing I didn't like was the straight seemed really long because it could use another 100 horsepower, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> like, you got these great brakes, let's go quick. How about know? RS7 motor? Yeah, yeah, or, you know, or just think, I mean, it's a 2.9 liter twin turbo. You can do 800 horsepower standing still if mm-hmm. you wanted. Yeah. It's not hard these days. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, so the uh, wealthy uh, Dutch guy who founded Ascari sold it to a wealthier Swiss guy. Mm-hmm. And I met the CEO of Ascari, uh, whose name was Jesus, Jesus, and he came up and introduced himself, and he's like... We're dumping a hundred million euros into Ascari. Oh, we're gonna like track? put in a boutique hotel and really, and That's we're gonna do, we're gonna do less launches, more like kind of you know private club yeah. days, and we're buddies now. Do so. they have a? Are they doing a country club type of model there? Yeah, and and basically what it sounded like is like you know they've looked around and like you know they see what thermal's up to. Yeah, but they're like thermal. You can't really go there for four or five months a year. It's, it's yeah, horribly it's too hot. fucking hot. And it's also I'm going there Thursday. Yeah, and hmm. as you know, it's also not the greatest track in the world. No, if the car is really fast, it's not great. If the car is three to four hundred horsepower, it's really nice. It's pretty good. Yeah, and if the car is over that, it's not enough track. And like Ascari, yeah. you know, you can do. 
real big stuff there. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, and you have tons of runoff. It's just, it's a great track. And it's just freaking beautiful. Yeah. It's, really this, cool. it's a great place to film. Yeah. It's just stunning. And if you land in, uh, in Malaga, it's an eight minute helicopter ride. You know what I mean? Like, so for the <laughs> owner, oh, that. When you're measuring shit at helicopter ride time, you're fucking balling. Have dude. you met these people? <laughs> yeah, you know, I know, right? I, know. I mean, I, will, I know. Racetrack owners are something else. I won't, I won't tell you who, but there's a guy who uh, somehow I saw his cars. And, like, you know, he had a Vulcan amongst mm. many other uh, cars of that nature. And, you know, it's just, just... I went to the Hypercar Invitational, so I, I met those people. Thanks to yeah, you. Yeah. Appreciate you tossing me that gig. Yeah, man. It turned out to be a very fun yeah. event. Yeah. yeah. So, so, okay, so imagine it's all those people, people in Spain. And they're yeah. like, you could make... if like They're like, that eight-minute helicopter ride, after a few beers, it's annoying. So put it in a hotel, you know? That's so funny. <laughs> You yeah. want to hear some fucking? Here's a quick, quick rich people update. Yes, uh, <laughs> I went to Germany for this this conference, and it was it was really really cool. And I'm there with Bozy. We got there a day early, and we're wandering through town, and we see these SUVs. Real quick, we're in Germany, uh, Lake Tegernsee, which is about 90 minutes south of. Munich, uh, almost to the Austrian oh, border, oh, that part right at the, the base country. of the Alps. That, that's really wealthy. It's really wealthy. That, and beautiful. It's like the yeah. Lake Como of Germany is yeah. where this thing is. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Yeah. And Interpol raids this compound <laughs> on the lake while we're there. Ah. And they got a Russian oligarch who was hiding out. His name is Al Alisher Usmanov, I believe. It's a name you might know. And he owns, yeah, here we go. And he, he owns a yacht called Dilbar, which is one of the five largest private yachts uh, in the world that he owns. They raid this fool's compound while we're there. And it's news in the town. We're all talking sure. about it. And it, according, to, according to the Super Yacht Times, someone sent me a story <laughs> last night, the Super Yacht Times, Interpol found in this motherfucker's house four Fabergé eggs valued at a hundred million dollars. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. That's like, well, I can't remember the guy's name. The guy who was, he was like the, the Putin-backed uh, president of Ukraine who uh, fled the country. Yeah. But like, one of the reasons why like Zelensky got in. The yacht. Look at the yacht, Dilbar. Oh, I've seen Dilbar. Yeah, sure. Dilbar's a fucking... Dilbo hangs Dilbar's in Monaco. A, it's a yeah. monster. Oh, yeah. It's too big to go into Monaco. Yeah. They have to anchor it Look off the of... sailboat behind but that, that's, it. That's, that's Yacht A. That's Yacht A. That's Sailing yeah, Yacht yeah, A. Yeah, 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 Sailing yeah. Yacht A is another that's Russian oligarch. That's Abramovich's wow. yeah. yacht. And it's designed by Philippe Stark. It is not an attractive boat. Yeah. Oh, and like, by the way, that yacht, that little yacht on the picture in between them, quote, little yacht, is probably 200 feet. Because right, Dilbar is probably 450 I think, feet. Yeah, I think Dilbar's, I think it's it's in the middle fours. Yeah. It's which, enormous. Which is, which the Titanic <laughs> was like 800. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, So that's half a Titanic for one dude. This is like a football stadium floating on the it's, water. Yeah. It's enormous. longer than a yeah, football yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Jeez. But, but, but so the, the corrupt former president of Ukraine, like who, you know, basically stolen all the resources in this poor country. Uh, had a fucking Fabergé egg, which, yeah, is like a $20, 25 mm -hmm. million dollar thing that a elected official doesn't need to yeah. have in their private compound they yeah. built with your money. Four of them Four this dude had rad. at the fucking compound. <laughs> I mean, I, one day, I mean, you know, we'll probably be killed for talking about it and we'll probably be dead before the book is written. But, like, the amount of wealth that the oligarchs in Russia have just pilfered is, yeah. is like— But here's the thing. America, too. Yeah, but America not too. like like you know they, like they say Putin might actually be the wealthiest person in world history, like surpassing the royal family, surpassing oil. Definitely sheets. possible, yeah. but also there could be there could be some shit in America that we don't know about hidden offshore that yeah. we don't actually know what people have. Yeah, but it's it's just like he was able to just like steal everything from the largest country on earth. Yeah, I mean, after True. the collapse of the Soviet Union, they were yeah. able to like strip yeah. the infrastructure of that right. country and Privatize sell, it, everything. sell it for parts, which is what some people in America are sure. trying to sure. do and, and have now. done And have done. And have, yeah. They're not as far along, I would yeah. say. No, like if, not you, as, if you look at like the telephone companies and stuff, yeah. but we just get to a certain point where, where they didn't get to, you know, they just kept going. Well, yeah. there's also the difference there where it was like, it was owned by the government for a while and then got taken and then sold whereas here like bell 
arrived, there was nothing here. They built the yes. infrastructure yeah. Yeah. and then made money on that. So it's like it's like a different system, of course. So it feels more like theft, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just like it, it, like if, if you read about uh, the the weird compound Putin has. Yes, uh, on the it's like on the lake. It's like a you billion can't, you dollar can't, yeah, that house. You, they, you can't get within a mile of it. That or has a like hockey that. rink in it. Yeah, and <laughs> like, it has a fake wall on the mountain where his his wine cellar is in the mountain, and a wall of it is like a two way mirror, so he can look out at the ocean. But if you look at it from outside, it look they painted it to look like mountain. Oh, dude, wall. I have one of those. It's <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, but like you know what I mean. Like if if you got a hockey rink, like I've I've been to a house with a one two lane bowling alley, and that's sort I of have, like I I I have been to a house with a hockey rink. It wasn't. Really? It was not a. I mean, it was not a, uh, a L.A. Kings size hockey rink. Oh, okay. but I have I have been to homes that have probably you probably call it a half rink. Okay, it's probably probably a half rank with boards. Well, maybe Zach could look up. I mean, it was Putin's it was mansion, but because oh, some yeah. of the stuff was some exceptionally next level shit. I mean, you got you know what that costs to fucking dip, build and but, maintain? It's crazy. But, but like a billion dollar house in that part of uh, Russia, <laughs> yeah, billion dollars in Russia. Because like the, <laughs> the most expensive house in L A is like yeah. that's Navalny Navalny's place. It's right? like a hundred. They're asking like hundred eighty million or something. But like you know, it'll be five times more expensive. It's it's like Buckingham Palace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? and apparently mm-hmm. there's problems with it. So they're trying to rebuild it because of the shock. It's fall, completely falling apart. Yeah. It's yeah. shocking. I'm shocked. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So so yeah. anyways, Ascari is going to be rad. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, Where do we begin? Can we talk yeah. about Goodwood? Were yeah. you just there? Yeah. 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 yeah it's yeah. what's on my bucket list. I oh, you haven't yes. done it? No. Oh. It's. I really like. I need to make a. Yeah. It was. It was revival. It right? was. I went to the revival. Yeah. yeah. That's like the one to go to. Yeah. Right. It just depends. I would say this: like, if you just are going to do Festival of Speed and Revival, and that's and you're only going to ever go once, yeah, Revival is kind of. It's just, it's the only car event where most of the people there don't really care about cars. They're sort of into like costumes. It's like cosplay, <laughs> but that makes it really sort of fun and, mm-hmm. and like let like. Last year I went and I saw Gordon Murray getting a coffee, and I was going to go say hi to him. And I was like, you know what? There's no one even looking at him. Like, this is probably this guy's only time he can be at a car event, and he isn't mobbed by everyone in the world telling him he's the smartest person to ever live. You know what I mean? Like, I just watched him drink his coffee, and I was like, I'm going to leave him alone. Have you talked to him before, though? Yeah. He was awesome. No, he's incredible. He did 60 minutes of the best radio we've ever done in my our fucking life. I heard. I he was I amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it was I, great. I, but you, you get my point mm-hmm. that like it's mm-hmm. it's just it's it's like a Ren fair, but for like 40s, 50s, and 60s Britannica. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> and with, the, with racing in the background. And the cars are cool. But they're not like, you know, like I, I like '60s Cobras. I don't know if I need to like '17 '60s Cobras, and I, right. I, I like E types. And you know, there, there's some. Look, there was two. Those uh, guys drive them shits hard, though. They're not oh, fucking around. Oh, they drive like maniacs. They don't yeah. drive like Monterey Historics. Oh racing. no, no, they no, drive no, no. like they're fucking. Is some money on the line? Yeah, and you think there's side pots. Think, no, you think there's, you know, there's no. I, I the think race? it's just pride. Yeah, I think it's just pride. But like, someone's got to be running the gambling over there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some, but, but I, I think, think the, I think the main focus Lord is the March driving and the, the excitement of doing going. that. You know, <laughs> that's you no. Know, Lord really... March is the kid. You mean the Duke of Richmond? Oh, Lord yeah, March. Charles is the kid? March, oh. is, who was Lord March, uh-huh. became the Duke. Oh, I see. and now Charlie, his long-haired, very nice son, is is LM, is Lord March. Oh, yeah, and they're they're still both very nice, but. um it's like, yeah, they do drive the piss out of the cars, but it's like they're driving the piss out of a bunch of minis where, like, they do have 250 GTOs there. Yeah. They're not racing, if that makes any sense. Oh, okay. They're just on display. Oh, wait, uh, they do no, have races have, where some of those run, They right? race them a the, bit. The, the 250 GTOs that run are not 250 GTOs. Right, that's the— They're replicas. Right, that's the, yeah, quiet, yeah, yeah. the quiet rumor. The, the, the co- it's, not, it's not a rumor. The, the Cobras are Cobras, you know, and it's cool. They, yeah. they run hard. The coolest car there by, I, I was like gobsmacked by it, was um, there was an E-Type, and it was, uh, Jensen Button was driving it. Oh, I saw I saw on his Instagram, yeah. And, Adrian, and it's owned by Adrian Newey, Adrian right? Adrian Newey's son was driving it, and yeah. Adrian Newey uh, worked on it, let's say. And so you look at it, you're like, that's the coolest looking E-Type. And then you see it next to another E-Type, you're like, that's not even shaped like an E-Type. <laughs> <laughs> he fucking, like, oh. Holman moodied the... Oh, uh... he, he smoky units. <laughs> he smoky he units. He smoky units. Like, 
Like it's a seven eighth scale E type. Actually, uh, I don't. It's just wildly differently shaped, and like it, like a lot of these guys, they'll pop the the trunk up like uh-huh. an inch for a spoiler effect. If you look at his. It's uh, it's also then like filled in. It's got so like the, a lip. There's, there's no air going into the trunk. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? It's, yeah. it's sectioned. And like if you look at his exhaust, it is like, oh my god, that's the sexiest side exhaust I've ever seen. You look at all the other E types. It's just yeah. like a a pipe that ends. There, yeah. Oh wow. It looks like an eagle. It looks like one of the one yeah. of the eagle ones. But look yeah. look at the rear hips on it. You know what I'm saying? It's like we have a photo from the rear. Oh well, there. Like but, that, oh there's the back. Oh the trunk is popped up. Yeah. yeah look the, at that. And it's filled in. And it's, it's fucking slammed on the ground real too. Low. Oh yeah. Oh so this, where there's normally an air gap around the sides and yeah. back that's filled in. That's all filled in. That's hilarious. And it was oh funny he made a long tail by raising the trunk. Yeah yeah. yeah. That is so brilliant. Uh, and and it's just shaped different. You have to see it like part. I saw Part. Yeah, no, it's it doesn't really look that. I, you can tell now that I know what you've said, it doesn't really oh, look so like funny. an E-type anymore. And, and it's like that that top is like it. It just looks like a bolt-on hardtop, but it's like not a bolt-on hardtop. Well, he's got an effect there by painting it a different color that makes it look like a bolt-on, but it's not actually shaped like the regular E-type hardtop. And every part, like that little that scoop in the back, which looks like a vent on the roof. Yeah, like that's, yeah, yeah. That's a spoiler. Yeah, well, and all I mean, the, the black he, trimmer on her, I imagine, is seal is sealed, so it like it seals uh, yeah. up the air gaps. Perfectly. Long story short, the only reason I like my so friend, I'll leave his name out of it, but a friend of mine who was racing. Was like this is bullshit. He's like, <laughs> he's like, because I was like, what, what? it looks like he cut the roof off a 250 GTO and put it on an E type. Oh, basically. here, yeah. <laughs> here's it leading another regular E type. Yeah, it oh. doesn't look the same at all. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at the that's rear. A look yeah. at the rear fenders. Let's see if I can zoom in. That's fucking cool. So, as hell. but my my friend, I'm like, I'm like, where are you gonna finish? And he's like, well, my car's stock. He's racing a Cobra. He's like, so we would be sixth, but we're gonna be seventh because of this fucking cheater car. <laughs> And I go, what's what about it? He's like, look at it for a while. And I'm like, that's really nice. He's like, look at the name on the side. I'm like, A. Nui. I'm like, oh, like because his kid's name is not Adrian, but something like that. I was like, Jensen, but so Jensen Button driving it. Yeah, I I can't remember how much they were ahead, but it was like it was like 20 seconds ahead, <laughs> you know. And then the the, the gearbox failed. Um, so and then and then a couple of the other cars uh, failed out, but it was it was a fun race. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool. It's cool. So yes. You got to go to the revival. It's yes. it's killer. I'll I'll tell you how to do it. It's JB it's rules. I got to go with him. Uh, I need the fucking yeah. tour from him. Well, that's easy. To, I'll, I'll tell you how to go and get it. You know. I'll, well, I have the outfit. I'm ready to go. That's right. I got the fucking historical emporium outfit. I'm like ready. I nice. think it's the coolest thing in the world. And I know that some of the cars are replicas, but but like we said, yeah, they don't, sixty at sixty. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah. but they, I mean, they don't drive. I mean, uh, historics are very cool, and it's a great way to experience cars because so many car shows are just walk around, look at them on the grass, and everyone's imagining, boy, gee, wouldn't it be cool to hear that and see that? But the driving in this is so much harder and, like, proper wheel-to-wheel, and that's exciting. Oh, yeah, exciting. yeah. Oh, they, they, they go for it. You back. And, and there's that wackadoodle chicane they have yeah. for no yeah, reason, yeah. which makes everything, like, a Under, drift event. Yeah. 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 And the British guys like to drift, you know, so yeah, they, they drift oh, on their exit. Um, it's it's super cool. It's a fun time, and also like this is probably the most exciting race. But there's you know they have like those Lotus 15 with the climax engines, mm-hmm. and they have all, you know there was like there was a bunch of uh, GT40s. Uh, the Dane Stevens Cup. Like yeah. all right, yep. whatever, man. Right, right. <laughs> um, as an American, this one was a little weird because it was like. Last chance, moment of silence for the queen coming up in five minutes. Oh, it was like yeah. constantly like. You're like, that's when you go get a hot dog because yeah. there's no line. It's just because, you know, I just don't get monarchy. I'm sorry. We were in I, Scotland I right before she died, like days. Uh. And we went to Balmoral and there was all these cops all over. And they, our driver guy was like, oh, there's the queen is here because you know because there's the cops. And he was like, the driver, interestingly enough, like was like, she always said she wanted to die at Balmoral. I was like, huh. How about that? He's like, oh no no, she's gonna live forever. And I was like, really? And then like days later, but no, and they they were su- they were super into it. It was it was funny though, when she died, I think maybe the day after, I showed up in Spain on a, a Range Rover Sport launch, and they're a royal warrant holder, so they actually oh, yeah. do you know the, the the royal family helps them out. I don't know what a yeah royal the war- warrant warrant is like. You're the choice, the vehicle yes, of choice. There you the, go. I went to a uh, to a whiskey tasting in Scotland, and they were there was it was the the 
right next to Balmoral. We'd stopped at Balmoral on the way to the Royal Loch Nagar Distillery, and they had the royal warrant to deliver single malt Scott whis- whiskey to uh, to the Queen. Right, and and yeah. so the SUV. That's a big fucking deal. Uh, it is a very big deal, but but the weird thing was, they took it really serious. They were very sacrosanct about like how in mourning Range Rover is, and they almost cancel, but they decided yes, corporations can mourn. Uh, they, I mean, they were they were mourning. I mean, they were like serious about it, and they were like, "Please, we beg you, like, you know, you're going to be here in Madrid, and you're going to be out having a good time. Like, please don't post any pictures of of you enjoying yourself while you're on this trip." And I was on the I was on a lifestyle wave, and to just talk shit about lifestyle people, like, I mean, what useless. <laughs> <laughs> Three people didn't bother to bring their driver's licenses, and they just they just got rides. And then another person who had a driver's that license wouldn't r- drive. You know the- what? Respect. They got rides. <laughs> I showed up to be driven around in a Range Rover. Yeah. Well, one of, them, one of them. One of them. One of them wouldn't drive the off-road course. Which was wouldn't wouldn't wait? Which Range Rover launched the one here? The, the sport. No, the, the one, I was sport. just there. Oh, sorry, the sport, okay. yeah. And it was like it was a it was you know fairly. Challenging to the vehicle, maybe, but as a driver, they got people, you know, doing yeah, yeah. every hand sign there is. Not hard. And Range uh, Rover does it right. Yeah, and I was like, "Come on, like you're kidding." Yeah. You know? And then, oh, and then, so we get to the the lunch destination. <laughs> Please don't post pictures having fun. Yeah, no, <laughs> serious. Just... Ser- well, I, I can even I can even go large. Anyways, we get to the lunch destination, and they're like, "So you can choose to because you know there's." There's five different Range Rover Sports based on the engine. Right? Uh-huh. So there's, yeah, anyways, they go, you can drive the variants, uh, including an actual Range Rover that's a plug-in hybrid, or you can do this wine tasting. And like a lot of people did the wine tasting. Sure. Which maybe I should have done, but I, you know, I, I had to drive everything. Yeah, well, you you drive. I do. There's dr- time for wine later. You but drive. Like, God, these useless. Anyway, I shouldn't say Can we say talk that. about the Range Rover Sport? Fuck yeah. Was it great? It was the first Range Rover Sport I've driven where I'm like, this is... A step up compared to the Range Rover that it's based on. I've always felt if you get in a Range Rover Sport, it feels like they've chiseled away yeah. at a Range Rover and come up with something less. When I went mm. on the la- the launch for the last one in San Francisco, which was 2015 or 16, about right? Yeah, I thought it was a great product. It was a really nice product, but it did feel like a more budget, regular. Range Rover. Yeah. You're right. And, and this one, I think what they did that's different, and Angus was, Angus McKenzie was flipping out about this. He thought it was a real negative. I thought it was great. They, they've they changed the steering. So, you know, Range Rovers have pretty loosey-goosey luxury yeah. Rolls lots Royce. Of, lots of lock to lock. Yeah. And Very so for light. the sport, I, would, I don't know what it is, but I would guess they made it like, instead of 18 to 1, made it like 15 to 1. Mm-hmm. So it's a heftier, heavier helm. And I think it, it, it's, a, it's a noticeable difference. The only... Well, it's a sport. Should be. It should mm-hmm. be. It should be. And it sport. never was. Yeah. It never was. It was a cute name to, like, sell it. You know, well, like, the first one wasn't actually based on the Range Rover. It was based on the Discovery. Right. Second gen was the Range Rover. This one's still the Range Rover chassis, but now I just think it's better. I think it's gorgeous. The, the, the actual Range Rover has a better rear seat, but that's... Well, that's, that's the advantage. That's and the point. There's probably 500 pound difference uh, between the Sport and the Range Rover, which I think is more than the last gen. Mm-hmm. So, well, we, what size wheels is this on? Uh, the red one is on 23s. How did you find? I mean, granted, you were in Spain where the ride is better. Fantastic. Because I drove, I went to the regular Range Rover launch, and you know, on smooth roads it's fine, but over some really bumpy stuff that was on the drive route, it felt like you felt all the things through the tire. Unfortunately, which kind of for a luxury vehicle ruined it a little bit. Well, so again, this is the sport, so you you, you can forgive a flinty or more athletic ride. And True. also, what I noticed was to get to the off-road portion, we had to drive a, a, like a quarter mile dirt road. And I've just been paying attention to this ever since the Bronco launched. Like the Bronco, which is great, like rock crawler, has the worst ride quality in the known universe on like an unpaved road. No, remember it, we remember that? Shocking. Remember we had the two door? Yeah. It was good on the pavement. Yeah. And it was it good on the rock like crawl. And it was like an ox cart yeah. on a dirt road. Yeah, yeah I remember it, that. It, it felt was, like it had cheap It was suspension. fucking terrible. Because yeah. it, the body's so flimsy. It yeah. turns out. That's why the Raptor, they made the body the right. in white 50% stiffer. It's yeah. not for off roading purposes. It's yeah, for like. Yeah. It's, but, for, it's for fire roads. Yeah. So I've been paying a lot of attention ra- to that. The Bronco Raptor was awesome. Bronco Raptor's red. It was fucking cool. But I've really been, you know, I just noticed. I was like, "Wow, this is this is something I'd never paid attention to before." Mm. Like, just on, on on nothing that any vehicle in the whole world could go down a road. How's an SUV's ride quality? 
It was exceptional. And then, to me, the craziest part was it had rained the day before, so the off-road was pretty muddy. And we were on 23-inch rubber bands. Yeah. And Range, every time I off, I off I, people yelled at me about this, but every time I off-road a Range Rover, I'm always shocked by how good they are. And I know I shouldn't be. Because that's the thing. But I am shocked. And, and as the tires, yeah, I remember when I went from, you know, to 19s to 21s, yeah. I was shocked. Now they're on 23s. It's brilliant off road. It's better than ever. I remember know? I did. Were you there? Uh, I guess it was maybe not, uh, 2018 or 19. The the Sport SVR launch at Monticello. No, I wasn't there. So no. they had us go on an off road trail, but they had us bring our helmets. <laughs> we didn't have to wear them, but they were in the back seat. So right. We did this shit. We drove over wet logs. It was like a pile of wet logs. You know, and then and, and you're on the and SVR through, tires. And the SVR tire, yeah. yeah. And then through mud, it was a mud bog. Yeah. And then they had us drive up onto this metal rack. Ah. Yeah. And they power washed the fucking truck. You didn't get out of it. They power washed it, and then you drove straight onto the racetrack. Yeah. No change in setup, and you ran like four laps. Yeah. And I was like, holy fuck! Right. Your event people are geniuses, and this spread of performance. Abilities is absolutely extraordinary. Right. Like, I just climbed a pile of logs, did an 18 inch mud bog, like, went through a tight winding trail, went over some rocks, and then just lapped Monticello. Like, what the fuck is this vehicle? <laughs> and so, I, I think this one's even better. And also, I mean, this, this shot Zach has up right now. That doesn't look real. That looks like a rendering. Yeah, that's what that's what it looks like. I mean, yeah. It's literally gorgeous, yeah. and I think it's better looking than the Range Rover. I really it's slightly do. smaller than the regular Range Rover, isn't it? it? it oh yeah, yeah, right? it's, it's smaller. Yeah, it looks they're, good. They're, 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 there's a long wheelbase Range Rover, but right. yeah. a short wheelbase. But it also, and this is you have to be a real car geek. But the way that the roof, it, 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 you can't tell from this angle, but the, the roof curves down in the back a little bit. Yeah, and it looks. Yeah, there's a good one. It, it's the same kind of profile as uh, the the Bentley Blue Train car, the, uh -huh. the, the whatever it's called, the Gurney Nutting or whatever, and it's just this gangster British thing. Yeah, they, they do. It happens to English cars every once in a while, and it's just so gangster. And it's an aggressive styling detail. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and because there's no third row, there's no one back there, so the roof can droop like that. Mm -hmm. and like, yeah. All right, you lose. One backpack of, of storage. But it's and not it like awesome. an SUV coupe. No. It's just an aggressive no. yeah. SUV style. Which carries on detail. from the last generation one, which also had the sloping roof. Yeah. It's just, it's, I, I, and I know what you're saying. We're like, going to go for the it, wood first. I feel like they evolved that design really, really well. Yes. And it built off of it without changing it. And it just looks, it looks like it's from 10 years in the future in terms of like the sculpting. The tail lights, the tight tolerances, all they're, that stuff. They're in. I, I I call this phase of design. They're in the polishing icons phase. So, you know, if you look Ooh, at yeah. if you Go look ahead. at like they Range establish Rovers, the silhouette. Yeah, and, and they and, massage. Yeah, and so if you it, it, like Porsche does this with the 911. Yeah, they they polish an icon. There's no, there's you know, the, to the to the to the average human looking at uh, a 997 to a 991. You know, yes, there was big changes, but it changed like five percent, and that's. Mm -hmm. But I just think, I just think this one is is so, like again, it's hard to make SUVs good looking. It really, really is. They're all kind of the same from the side, and uh, I just think McGovern and his team like did such a great job. Also, if I can call it one more thing, on this trim, which is this is the big V8 with the BMW twin turbo. Uh -huh. uh, this is the sporty one. Everything's blacked out. Which is what, 500 horsepower? 523. Okay. Yeah. They blacked out Range Rover. They have such confidence in the design. That's interesting. Ooh. So if you look at every, if you yeah. look at an Aston Martin, which is the most beautiful car is, there is. There's, they couldn't be anything else. Because of probably the Chinese market, they have Aston Martin in like 72-point mm. font. <laughs> Porsche. Right, a right. 911 has the word Porsche in 72 point yeah. five. These guys are so confident. Look, you can't see it. Says yeah, they Range blacked Rover. it out. Brilliant! Yeah. I yeah, love it. I love it. It's a real interesting style and detail on the tailgate too. It's it's definitely new. They're go they've they've reduced the size of the tail lights. It's now a thin band. It actually the 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 band of tail light. Reminds me of like a 993 Porsche, yes. but high up. Yeah. You know, it's very, very interesting and it's stuff. Surpri it's surprising considering the regular Range Rover has the thin vertical lights that they're yeah. very proud of, which also I think look really cool. They this do. This is totally 90 degrees flip. 
I, but I, I just, I just, it's one of those things where I think they had 12 more months. I think they started mm. working on these cars at the same time. Mm. Range Rover had to come out a year ago. They had 12 more months to they perfect They heard the this. notes and they made adjustments. Like if you look at the rear of the new Range Rover, my friend who's a design student at uh, Art Center pointed, because I was like, there's something wrong with it. I can't put my finger on it. And she showed me what was wrong with it. And I was like, ah, you know. And it's what like, was wrong with it? Ah, it's, it's. Uh, we need the back, we need yeah, the rear. Just the hard rear, hard yeah. rear. Uh, that, there we that, go. That'll Bottom work. left there. Work. That'll yeah. Work. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, we need like a, uh, a harder rear. Yeah, I could get here, up and point here's at it. A straight there we, oh, rear. Perfect. Okay. So that the surround there that has the word Range Rover on it, the yeah. black surround, it's all curvy except for where the, the inner line, the inner line where the where the tail where the gate breaks. Uh huh. It's a square, and if you zoom in on it and oh, you see yeah. it in person, it, it's just this. It's jarring. Like everything else is subtly curved and flared Except that and rounded. Square. Except it's a ninety yeah. degree angle. And it, I could see that. And yeah, it, this yeah. color kind of hides a bit in that more champagne color. Yeah. The you lighter know? the color, yeah, yeah, the yeah, more yeah, yeah, you yeah, accent. Yeah, yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah. Ah. And the other thing they're doing, and I'm going to nerd out for a second. If you look at like the A lines and the belt lines on this thing, they're subtly curved. Yes. Real. It's like it's like a tense. You know, like, like a bow and arrow. Like if you just start to tense it. Well, it you've bends. got that lower belt line that curves up. Yeah. Yeah. You've got the the, but that A-line, that the shoulder line. that that goes go. yeah. slightly curves towards the back, and then the roof does that slight droop at the back as well. It's all raked rearward, which gives you that's where you get that luxurious vibe from. The Rolls Phantom does it. It's also yeah. the appearance of speed. The Bentega doesn't. That's well, <laughs> the Bentega doesn't do anything. I mean, poor Bentega. Exterior wise, no. I, I think I've said that's this why to platform you. shared SUVs don't. They don't work. I sometimes, I mean, look, the Urus and the Bentayga are the same platform. I think the Urus is a successful design. The Bentayga, I think the, R, the Audi RS Q8 is a more successful aesthetic design yeah. than the Urus on the same platform. <laughs> totally. I love driving Uruses. Like, no hate on the yeah. Urus. Yeah. Rules. Yeah. But aesthetically, I think the RS Q8 does it best. I'm, I'm, on that one, I'm Camp Urus. But I'll tell you what I'm not. is like, if you look at the Cayenne, like, the coupe, mm. it's a potato. They yeah, literally, it's not good. They put it's a, not it's good. It's a potato. Yeah, it's just it's a, it's, it's it's a white potato. It's yeah. terrible. But like, anyways, yeah. And, and again, it, I just think it's it's harder to make an SUV look good than it is to make any other type of car. Sure, it's really look handsome and sexy. And this is what Land Rover, Range Rover excels at. And this is you know, does this share platform with anything? Range Rover, Range Rover Sport. I mean, right. So that's yeah. I mean, that's, you know, nothing nice, outside. Yeah, not, yeah, no so Jags. That's a nice luxury. Of it no, because yeah. Jag and the the F Pace and, and the, the Velar, Velar yeah. are, are the same. But I think this big platform mm. for now. I mean, I think they did an awesome job. Like really, them and I mean, and it's the Defender, think, like, when was the last them. time Land Rover made something ugly? Oh, LR two. Uh, well, LR2 yeah. Was great. I mean, the the, the, the Defender, new the discovery new, from like, whatever the new eight, discovery wasn't great. It was, yeah. it, it was good. Oh, with the offset license plate, that was a fail. Yeah, yeah the, the, oh, the weird offset it, license. It just plate. wasn't. It wasn't. Also, I but mean, they don't have a lot of misses. Aesthetically, their track record is oh, very it's, good. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. You, you look at Porsche. Like again, the nine eleven is great to look at. Panamera, eh, Taycan's good. Yeah, uh, Cayenne, eh, Macan, eh, just you know, it's it's like a. a, a I like Macan. I like Macan. I like Macan. I do like. I like it's, Macan. It's okay. I mean, it's not the Macan's not winning a beauty contest in my eyes, yeah. but it's like it looks like a Porsche. It looks like a decent looking SUV. It yeah. it has a coupe shape without. Uh, Without looking like drooping the roof. All right, too much. I'll give you another yeah. one. You know. uh, Ferrari, right? Uh, Rome is good. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I don't like the front end of the yeah. thing much. There's not uh, a lot. Uh, 812. You know. I like 812. I like 812. Not so. It just it just sort of looks like a bunch of, to me a bunch of blurry lines and slashes. I love the engine and I love driving mm-hmm. it and I love the noises it makes. But it's sort of oh you know like if, if, you've, if you're just your 12 year old kid here's an 812 here's an Aventador. Yeah, no, you're right. There's not there's not much that Ferraris do. Doing stylistically, yeah, and that new thing, the Daytona thing, I'm into that wow. SP3. Dude, the Daytona is, is two million dollars. The but Daytona okay, but is is sick. almighty, sick. Oh, and the roof comes off. It's yeah. almighty. It's, it's the coolest it's so thing ever. Sick. But, but that's but their the regular Roma production design. cars are not blowing my yeah, mind. Yeah, right they're now. not pretty. It's just, yeah. but like you look at Land Rover and like almost everything is a design knockout. Which yeah, is, it's just, it's just, yeah. there's a lot. It's hard talent. to do. It's very yeah. hard to do. 
And also it's the, the opposite of what BMW used to be. Yeah. Oh, what are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're BMW is things. the current king of very ugly vehicles. Have you seen, you know, the new XM? Yeah. There's one shot of it, a f- hard front with the headlights on. <laughs> Not Have you good. seen it? It's not good. It's the wildest thing in the world. Yeah, it's, it's like it's not good. It's it's yeah. It's like a, the blue XM with the headlights on. I can show you on my phone. There's, you know, uh, there's no, nothing. we'll we'll Ugh. find it. It's not. It's just not. It's a hard good. front. It's a straight on, and it's it's because the headlights you can't see unless they're turned on. Yeah. So then it gets two squinty eye lines. It's, it's right there. Oh, that's not it. Uh, uh it's just it's just bad. Uh, no. Hang on. I'll I'll I'll. There it is, the, right there. Uh, <laughs> no, that's the prototype. <laughs> that's oh, it. it's still bad. It's way uglier. The production car is way uglier. It was like they figured out there's like some rule they're this? breaking. No, no, it's no, just no. not. Hang great. on. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. And I they saw the like... new the new seven series in person when I was at Alpina. Oh my oh, god, and it yeah, was that's heinous. John said that to me. He's like, "What the hell is <laughs> going it, on?" It was absolutely <laughs> heinous looking. It's, it's yeah, it's not shockingly good. terrible. Yeah. I really. I've, Oh, oh! Those are the production. those are the headlights. That's the production car. Oh my God, that's atrocious. I, I don't know where you're gonna find it, Zach, and I'm sorry to. Do, I can hold it up to like a hold it a up camera. Here, give, right it, here. give it to me. Yeah, put a camera too. Zach. You're on it. Yeah, is that about right? Oh, that's so bad. It's brutal. why does it have two sets of lights? It's brutally I, be, bad. Because and <laughs> to go back to your point about the Range Rover, <laughs> the top lights are angled and the bottom lights are totally flat, which also looks odd in my opinion. I, dude, it's very terrible. It's it's almost it's almost like they're like, hey, let's break rules. We know I'm I'm, uh, you know, I designed the Murcielago. Like I'm a great designer. I know how to do this. But like, you got the guy who did the Mercy. Yeah. What? Songerfolk. Yeah. It, wow. So it's like you got to know all the rules oh, the before mighty, you can break the them. And I know all the fall. rules. <laughs> Mercies have aged very well. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about a car that looked good when it was new. Look, Wayne Cherry. Wayne Cherry yeah. oversaw the, the 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 C6 Corvette, which is arguably the best generation. It's, it's one clean of them. design, great and the clean Aztec. design, yeah. and the Aztec. I at remember the same that. time. I remember same that. Guy. I went on the Grand Sport launch, yeah. and I remember that Aztec yeah. and C6 were. I think he did see uh, one of the C7s as well. Uh, yeah, he I was think right, he might have done, right around there. Yeah, I think he did C7 the Stingray same, as well. The same yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. Now, the Aztec. <laughs> no, look, I, honestly, time, it, it, the world came to the Aztec. It was ahead of its time. The, in terms uh, of functionality or design? I, design. design. How many fucking slopey backed crossovers with okay. cladding are there? Yes, now? I mean, to that, the world the came matter. to the Aztec. Of course, details you're, matter. You're but. right. You're right. But like the, like the exposed gas cap. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> There's a lot of terrible in the yeah, Aztec, yeah. but and, but and, also a lot of things that that were that were unique to that car. Big things, not little things. The, yeah, yeah. the body shape, the built-in tent. Yeah, I mean, I mean a bunch of that. Sh- like if you dude, had a built-in tent, if Rivian tent today, had a fucking right. built-in tent, <laughs> yeah. everybody would be like you yeah. won't believe it's got a built-in <laughs> tent. Every people all about yeah, that. But the but there's world so much wrong. came to but, the but Aztec to me, later. To me, it's I'm just that like, you. The, the the worst of all, and this is just maybe just me. The exposed gas tank just looks like it's damaged it's from the really fact. It looks like you stole it. Someone stole yeah, the yeah, door. Yeah, it looks like yeah, someone stole your yeah. lid. And it's, these double decker lights, which are present yeah, on the new we, XM, yeah. Now we now we don't even terrible. have gas caps anymore. Right now, that's how far off that. Yeah, one. no, there's there's a lot wrong with the front of the Aztec. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, that one has no cladding. Look at let see the yellow. Get the, the original. The yellow, the original is ah, well. Yeah. That is. <laughs> yeah, no, the Aztec. I mean, look, it wasn't good, but yeah. like, but but you, you know but what? It predicted a lot of. Where car design was going and functionality twenty years early, but what, by the way, why am I wearing headphones? Did I don't know. You yeah. don't have to. Then you guys are wearing they're, headphones. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, you know, that, they're not. Some on. people it gets. They're not on. <laughs> I don't think. I don't. They should be. Or if you want them to be on. Some people fun. use them to get in the radio vibe. Some people are bad at I radio. Think that's what it was. You and I don't have that problem. So you know what car has completely. Uh, was was way futuristic, and if they just released it today, it would be a, a bestseller. Is the Via Cross? Oh like, yeah! Like mm-hmm. my, you know how happy God. I am when I see one of them. I saw oh two. God. There was two that came to good. I oh, know that came to the 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 car show at the uh, carousel at the oh, yeah. Park. Yeah. I made the, I shouldn't say this out loud, guy might be listening, but I made the mistake of talking to one of the owners and like, man, was he happy to tell me about it. 
<laughs> the V across, I think. I mean, some of them, when you put you put the right wheels and tires on them, like that one right in the middle there. Just, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's that. It yeah. looks great, dude. It looks great. If you if, age so well, if, yeah, it's like a concept car. It, if that cool. had like you know a real chassis and engine, you know, or even like as an EV with like I drove a one thousand once. horsepower. One of the the dealer I worked at. This is a 2001. I worked at this dealer in 2003. Yeah. This wasn't even an old car. Right. We took one in on trade, and I was, like, so excited to drive it because I never saw them. And, and you want to talk about a pitiful driving experience. This is a terrible driving vehicle. They're horrible. It's and like, to call it a tractor would be a compliment, <laughs> but God damn, does it look cool. Do you remember, God, what was it? was the rodeo. Yeah, it was a rodeo. 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 Yeah, a rodeo, yeah. Man, I, I saw a rodeo today that had... Had the fucking hard top. Oh wow! It wasn't the the full roof rodeo. Yeah, it was the two door soft top rodeo that had the mm. hard top installed on it. I saw that today, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And Hannah was like, "What?" <laughs> I had a I had a Cherokee. I had a bitchin' like XJ Cherokee. It was yeah. awesome, and I let my buddy drive it, and he loved it because they were. I mean, it was, that thing weighed nothing, mm -hmm. and it had a you know at the time 190 horsepower straight six. It was awesome, but um. So he wanted something like it, so he bought a rodeo, and he was so disappointed. <laughs> it was it was, not like it. Well, not only did it suck in every single way a car can suck, but then the roof was uh, abysmal. Yeah. Like, it just wind soft got top in. Rodeo. The soft top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not good. Terrible. He was so mad God, about it. XJs are going to be so collectible. Especially the late the the, the post facelift like the classics. Yeah, well, my well, I had two, but Did the you have one a sport or a classic. I had oh boy, you or was there's pre sport. Car I had a ninety five, a green ninety five, and I had a ninety seven. I just know the years. The, the white was a classic. Yeah. The white was a classic, but my um, my buddy when he drove mine and wanted it was about. 2000 maybe yeah. 2001 when the Liberty had come out uh -huh. and like no one's buying the Liberty no because it's the dorkiest lane it is Jeep. a very dorky car it, it's horrible mm -hmm. it's like how could they go from the ex from the Cherokee yeah I mean that's crazy yeah. like what you did to themselves <laughs> they're like I know what we'll do throw all these people like, oh, the these bus. Cherokee seals are really cutting in a Wrangler oh man my <laughs> buddy my buddy Brandon had a Cherokee sport that was like a 98 maybe 97 98 4 yeah. liter yeah. post oh, yeah. face yeah, lift, the cloth yeah. interior and at the time, it seemed like we couldn't believe that that was a new car because it felt so old right <laughs> but also you want to talk about a car that had a perfectly sealed hot box. We used to go <laughs> yeah. six up in the Cherokee. Uh, can confirm. <laughs> dual blunts. Can you confirm. Go, you got to yeah. go two blunts wow. within 10 minutes. Oh, man. Oh, the wow. air, you could That thing, fuck Elon Musk. The to the 98 Cherokee could be a boat well, my, for brief periods of time. My 96, <laughs> my 96 or 95 uh, green Cherokee did uh, experience a lot of hotboxing. I can mm. confirm. Green but on the inside and what the a outside. Great, yeah. What a great car to hotbox. The Cherokee. But, Something about that car made it really appropriate for that It tab. was small, I yeah. think. <laughs> so there's the volume area. But the um, it was it was just it was so unbelievably quick. For because it, I mean, it must have weighed it was 3, pounds. Yeah, it was in a straight line. In a straight line, no Stra brakes. Yeah, no brakes, no, no handling. handling. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was four speed auto. It was incredible off road. Like it was at the for the time, yeah. it was as good as anything else so off road. You just made me think of something that all of my, uh, not all, but a bunch of my friends had. What in hindsight were pretty rugged SUVs. Sure. In high school, Cherokees and Grand Cherokee, hard bodies, two door Tahoes and hard bodies. Zero of us ever left pavement. See, I we was never yeah. left pavement. I was so this lucky. This was pure Greenwich, Connecticut. I was I was so incredibly lucky. <laughs> so like one of my best friends growing up, this guy Kevin Livingston, his dad Bob Livingston was a he was a not a car journalist, but he was an RV journalist. Oh my god! He worked what for a Trailer gig. Life magazine, <laughs> Trailer and he Life would magazine. he would get press cards. God with, fucking press, bless. press RVs. Press RVs, Press but RVs. also, but I didn't care about RVs. I still don't like RVs. Wow. But like he, w I remember he had the f like when the Range Rover came to the states. I was fifteen. And I had my permit, and we went off roading, and he let me drive it. Yeah, and I'm driving a fucking press car. Like, and but he would take that would have been a game changer. He, driving he, a press car in high school. Oh, it was the greatest. That would have been it such a, a game changer. He, he was he was a big off road guy, and so I went to all the different off road spots in Southern California as a kid. You know, even when I was like, I remember 
I was ten. He had a Vanagon with the with the the synchro. Yeah, yeah. With the the viscous coupling, uh-huh. and he was like, oh, "This this sounds like bullshit." Because he was, you know, he doesn't have a transfer case. And I remember we went to Pismo Beach, and like dug clams and ate them and everything. But like, tried to, he tried to get it stuck in the sand and could not get the thing stuck. Oh, it was crazy. Man. You were part of like car testing yeah. in high school. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have that. We, we, we just had, had blunt rides. I remember he had the first Explorer, <laughs> which was such a pile off road because at the time. Oh, it was a Ranger. Well, it was at a the four door Ranger. At the time, it was just assumed that an SUV would be great off road because the why on earth would you buy an SUV mm-hmm. only to go off road? And even though it was a Ranger, it was more street. And we actually. Uh, cracked the uh, floorboard in the rear. It actually had like vented. Oh, you could see through, like missed had, a you component. Should have, you should have seen the paradigm shift at my fucking Jewy high school. Oh, Bob was, these when, guys were Jewish, by the way. When the Explorer so. fucking hit. The, oh, yeah. When the Explorer and the Grand Cherokee fucking touched down, 91, 92. Oh, my God. Everybody. Right. Within a year. Everybody had an Eddie Bauer <laughs> fucking 91 Explorer. Everybody had them. See, that's funny. It was wild. Because Eddie Bauer was an option, but on the West Coast, we're like, huh? Why would you buy a no, flannel? No, no. Yeah. In, Gren- oh, yeah, in yeah. Greenwich oh, yeah. and Westchester, everybody had the Eddie Bauer. The Orvis edition, Grand Wait, Cherokee. What's the Orvis? It's or, you know you know what Orvis is? No. Oh, Orvis. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> disclaimer. Am I, am I missing out? Well, there's a disclaimer involved. <laughs> the disclaimer is as of today, 2022, yeah. my father's on the board of directors at Orvis. Oh, wow. Orvis is a hunting and fishing outdoor brand. Yeah. Look, they have Matt, Matt, look at me. <laughs> yeah. They have they make clothes okay, for hunting sure. and fishing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they make really nice shit actually. I, I'm sure they do. I wear a lot of their shirts. They're oh. a lot of the button downs I wear are Orvis. Oh, oh. Um, well, then, they make not, nice I like stuff, your shirts, so whatever, okay. yeah. and they have hunting lodges and all this shit. But they did a car. They they collabed with Jeep, where Eddie Bauer did Ford. Yeah, LL Bean did Subaru. Yes, Orvis did Jeep in the I, early days. I just of the they did a Fabergé egg. Also, it was a good collection. <laughs> they, nobody in California would have okay. bought this shit. It's an East yeah. Coast brand. Okay, East I have no Coast. idea. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 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 I'm sure it was I'm, a thing. I'm sure everyone's calling me out right now for being. Can you, uh, you Zach? Know. Will you prove that there's an Orvis? Oh, Jeep I believe Grand you. Cherokee? I believe. No, it. I know you believe yeah, me, but yeah. someone out there might not. Oh, I think everyone's just like you know getting the get. So you know, you, by the way, you're doing this with us. You know, also we're, we're, we have the Nautica Villager. Yeah, we, yes, like we well, had, oh, not like we had. We had. You bought a, a Villager. My mother did. Yeah, that's what I learned to drive on Nautica really? Villager. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a miserable. There car. you go. The Grand Cherokee Orvis edition. Wow, it looks good. It's attractive. Yeah, it's a classy. Fucking now, now <clears throat> my father, my uh, he bought uh, two Grand Cherokees. He loved the Grand Cherokee. That was his favorite car. He he really wanted a Suburban, but it was just kind of too big to justify. Yeah. So when the Grand Cherokee came out, that was what he got. And he had these two. fucking yeah. things took my high school by firestorm. Hmm. The second gen, especially, bro. Everybody had right, right, right. He Everybody. Had, he had a first gen, and then he died in two thousand one. So we had a whatever two thousand one. Get me the was. interior. Is the interior? Is there a shot of the interior? Because outside on the outside, it's just you know green. I like the but brown. the interior. Yeah, it's that brown leather. The yeah. green on, oh. on the dark. Oh, oh cla- I like that. It's a classy ride. Yeah, man. baby. Orvis's These shots are terrible. Orvis uh, is the worst. Meekum, show. But, Orvis is some real tasteful shit. Two tone seats. The, <laughs> the, the <laughs> no. top of the seat is like ner- Ninja Turtle green. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I say tasteful? <laughs> <laughs> this is wow. Orvis, look at that. Wow. At that. Hey. Right? I mean, that's some good-looking molded plastic that looks like yeah, that. Yeah, it is. That's good, yeah. <laughs> or soft-touch rubber, whatever. Oh, and look at that tortoise fucking plastic on there. I mean, that's... You know? that. Look oh, at that. Geez. That's super... T- now, if that was a Range Rover Monterey edition, mm-hmm. $345,000. <laughs> did I tell you about that? Look at you, this did you hear about that? Look at the door cart, or the uh, armrest here. Oh, my God. That is a there deep is a, forest green that that's runs into a, lot going a tan on, handle. Look at, but look at those waist rails. Look at that burled walnut. That's, yeah. And it probably was, like, actually walnut. Walnut. This thing was expensive. Oh, I've, I've no doubt. I feel like this thing was like sixty G's when it was new. So when I went at, at, at Pebble, I went to the uh, Range Rover party, and they they're like, "Hey, by the way, we're doing 
17 of these okay. Range Rover <laughs> Carmel editions yeah. uh, for a 17-mile drive. And if you want to buy one, only people in this room right now are eligible. Which, <laughs> you have to buy one right. It was a dealership. But, but, but if you, Straight dealer but, experience. But if, but if you think about the crowd at Pebble, yeah, yeah. it's the smartest thing I've ever seen because they sold them all. $345,000. And wait, I'll go one better. I'll go one better. I'll go one better. Our friend, who I'm not going to name because he might get in a little trouble, but let's just say he used to work for them, for, for Jaguar Land uh -huh. Rover. You know uh -huh. who it is. Um, I said, you guys won't believe we're having cigars at the fire pits. You won't fucking believe what they're charging for this Range Rover. And he goes... $345,000. And I go, how did you know that? He's like, oh, my God. A couple years ago, before the new one came out, they said the highest we could charge based on our research is $345,000. Get the fuck out of here. Which is like, I think you could get a cullin in for yeah. like a base you cullin in. You might be able to get into the, I yeah, think yeah. you could. I'm not but that's what they're, they're trying to do with the new range is push into that space because they've watched – Bentley yeah. Yeah. and rolls and everything. I mean, if else, you're a Range Rover like, selling an autobiography SV yeah, loaded yeah. for 180 no, or 190. You're, 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 you're out of date, dude. 240s. Yeah, they're, they're, no, no, I know, but oh, last, oh, last yeah, gen. Yeah, yeah, let's last go gen, back. Yeah. Let's go back. Yes. Let's just. Yeah. Let's, Remember when they got to 150? Yeah, yeah. Rewind, rewind it four yeah, yeah. or five years. Right. SV autobiography right. is 180 grand. It's probably the best SUV on the market. And then here's Bentley coming in at 225. Here's Lambo coming in at 225, 275 yeah, loaded. Yeah, yeah. Now here's Rolls Royce. And you're a Range Rover going, well, what the fuck? Right. What are we yeah. doing? They're like, you know? oh, you can charge what? I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. A, they 100% woke up to that because they kind of created this entire oh, market. Oh, without question. Yeah. Without question. But, it's funny that that's the number, though. That yeah. they, 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 they did research. They did some research. But 345, mm -hmm. I mean... Like that's a BMW V8, and it's not even like the one in the M5 CS. It's oh, they the don't. Five how funny would it be if everyone in that room that bought that car lives in Carmel? So all they do is see their neighbors driving the same car, so they don't <laughs> even feel exclusive. Well, you the, must have an address on 17 Mile Drive. Right, but here, here's it. the other part. Here's the other part. That 345 price. That's because some portion, some percent of it goes to heal the Monterey Bay. Uh, there will be another Range Rover that's 345. There will be, and it yeah. won't be limited to yeah. 17 units. There will be one. Yeah, we have to amortize this research on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the consultants. <laughs> it's not actual R&D. Like, McKinsey charged us $7.5 million right. for this. Yeah. De De Deloitte and Touche claims we're not charging enough. They're charging enough. <laughs> Amazing. But that, that fucking that, rules. That blew, but I've never been there where it's like, and if you want to buy it, because it's like. Right now in this room. you got to be here. Was it hands up? Was it a show of no, hands? No, 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 no. They're a little more elegant than that but it wasn't wasn't it was closer to that than not but it was like you know it was like our special guests were so, they had a woman from like you know heal the monterey bay or whatever uh -huh. the organization come out and talk about how, the importance of biodiversity in the monterey bay yeah. and the importance of 17 mile drive you know just you know the yeah, full yeah, yeah. monty the, the full. have your the people car. meet our people on the side of the room tonight yeah. <laughs> But the 18th was, car gets dropped in the ocean as a place for a reef to grow. <laughs> right. But I very rarely these days do spit takes. Yeah, yeah. Because when he said 345, and Joe Everhart's a great guy. He's one of the nicest guys in the business. But I was like, you know, drinking champagne in my ridiculous suit I'm wearing at Pebble Beach. And I'm like, I thought he was going to say 245. Because, you know. You, yeah, well, it sounds, you know, it's expensive, but it sounds manageable. But I, like, for what you're spit my champagne. Who is this? Boston? It was like, what? You know, one of our good friends. Like, we locked eyes, like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? I went at Pet, well, I went to the. Uh Acura party mm. and the Acura. I I like the folks at Acura. Mm -hmm. I, I really I think they're they're solid people. They're trying to do good work. They really are. And but. Uh, <laughs> they showed that whatever the fuck they they they're bringing back the ZDX. Are they? Yes, but it's it's a as a concept. It's an EV. Oh it's that an SUV. oh that was cool looking. Yeah yeah yeah. It's not a bad looking yeah. thing. Yeah. But they started saying all this crazy shit about it that's not real. Oh, okay. And, you know, it's autonomous and, 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 and fucking. Uh, and, I, and there was a couple of times I, I could not restrain myself from laughing <laughs> out loud at what was being said. And I had to like be like, Farah, shut the fuck up. Was like, anyone else laughing? 
Adam Carolla. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, right, right, right. And right, right. Raf Orlov, who was with me, uh, who's who's now, believe it or not, one of my bosses. Road track. What? Raf really? is Raf. I, I guess so. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. As as editor at large, I report to Mike and Nate, yeah. um, and uh, and Dan on the print side. But I also have to deliver columns for the digital side. I report to Raf, which is hilarious. That's very weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, and, he's uh, he's a good dude. No, I love him, but yeah, it's just a, like weird yeah, that yeah, I have to yeah. report to him. And he was wearing his formal Birkenstocks. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Left. Dark, dark brown, not yeah. not light brown. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I I mean, poor Acura. Like, I mean, again, some of the, like Dave Merrick. Like, name a cooler guy in the automotive industry. Some of the dude, the folks John, who work there are John, awesome. John is yeah, like they're name, all great. And actually, better. I really like their cars. I mean, we just drove the MDX Type S and found it delightful. I gotta drive it. I gotta. It's I, really nice. I want. I mean, I want to like their car. I, you know, we did a comparison. We did the um, NSX Type S. And we picked, I liked that. Did you like it? No. I'll, you tell, you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why not. Well, because we brought along a uh, rear drive uh, uh, Carrera GTS, oh, which smoked tough. it yeah, in every tough. way. Not only subjectively, but then objectively, like. You know, it made a hundred less horsepower or whatever it was. It was quicker in a straight line. It was quick. It was it was tied in our mm. figure eight test. And, and by the way, we we also have the numbers for the all wheel drive GTS, which smoked it in every other way. You yeah. know, and, and, it, it, and the brakes were better. And so our, our test. That's the team, thing about NSX is is they're great if it's the only car you drive. It's one of those cars. There's a bunch of cars that are great in isolation. But in comparison tests, they don't do so and, good. And, and this is maybe it's just me, but I just, I still don't think it's great in isolation. Like I, I can think for that much money for like two hundred bills. Yeah, I can think expensive. of I can think of like a number of Audi R8s that mm. just every single time. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, yeah, uh, I can think of. Like like that Maserati uh, M20, I think oh, it's MC20, called. Oh, yeah. MC20, yeah. MC20, sorry. MC20 is delightful. I like, delightful. like if you're going to say, like, well, okay, I want, like, I don't want an Audi because it's too practical and there's too much, like, storage. I want no storage like the Acura, <laughs> and I want no place to put my sunglasses. Well, the Maserati, I would take that. Mm. And, it, again, it's about the same power. It doesn't have all the, the, the hybrid bullshit hanging on the front wheels. Um, I, you know, like, I, I really want to like the NSX. I, I never did. And I felt like the Type S is probably how it should have launched. Yeah, yeah. And they should have really done, like, an 800 horsepower one. Because, like, boy, if you have two motors on the front wheels, wh why is it, like, less than 600 horsepower? Sure. You know? That's and, fair. Yeah. So I'm – and but, again, I, I want to – I always I, – I took my driver's license test on an Integra. You know, like I'm, I, my my parents bought an '86 Integra. We were we were in. You know, like we. I remember I, I I told my dad I'm like Dad I'm reading in Car and Driver or Automobile definitely not Motor Trend but you know uh, <laughs> like they say these Acuras are great the legend and my dad's like twenty thousand dollars for a fucking Japanese car no way yeah and I made him go down to the dealer and we Legends drove great. away. When I was 11 years wow. old, he drove away after driving. He brought an Integra with a manual, like, yeah. leather seats, like pop-up headlights, you know. So I want them to kick ass. I want them to be wonderful. But like, and and I've been told this by by a certain Acura employee, like they don't know who they are. Sure. They well, like, it's a, it's U.S. only, right? Those are the cars are Hondas and other markets. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and they don't have Lexus's budget, right? You know, and they just like. Yeah, this this was is a guy. I'm not gonna say his name, but a guy at Acura told me this. Like, if you go to a dinner party, right? You know, uh, the banker that's that's the S class, right? And the architect, he's a he's a Jaguar or an Audi, and the um, you know the, the other guy is a BMW. Yeah, but like, like who is an Acura who guy? Who is the Acura? Like, yeah. what what type of person is that? The it's accountant like, who's sitting at table two, not table one. Well, wouldn't the accountant be you know maybe? Something else? I don't know. I mean, it's a good point. It's yeah. ha it's hard to 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 identify with their core with their everyday product, other than saying, "Yeah, it's nice." Yeah, and it's also like it, it, I, I think. By the way, the account would be in the Lexus, the audio file, because mm, right. they have great stereos. They do, their but so, so does good. Lincoln. So does you know Land Rover. Um, it, it's like okay, so they're this luxury performance brand, and they just killed off their Halo. They got rid of the NSX. 
It's like, okay, so their their Halo is an SUV? Yeah. Like, I'm not really expiring to a fast SUV. By the way, there's lots of fast SUVs out there that are the same money and probably make more power and handle better. Um, the Integra, like, well, you know, it's a fancy Civic, really. So it's like, well, they don't, they don't have an S-Class competitor. They don't, you know what I mean? It's like, where are they? Why are they? Type thing. Like, sure. I know why they are. They're to bring in profits for Honda in North America. But... You know, like at least Audi still has the R8, you know, and and, and 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 they make an RS3, they make an RS5, they make an RS6, 7. Like, goddamn, those are good. Yeah. For the most part. Um, and, and they got electric vehicles. They got the RS e tron GT. Like, wh- wh- where is the electric Acura? Like, they're just, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I mean, good, all good points. You know, all, all fair. And and that said, when they had the ZDX, which was ahead of the curve, it had one engine choice. Yeah, the ZDX, the, the body style was way ahead of the curve. The powertrain was meh. And I remember I said, I wrote a column. I actually said, hey, like M, AMG, and whoever, they should make a 500 horsepower version. Like right now it's 285 mm-hmm. or whatever it was. Like, And I got so much shit. They're like, you wouldn't do that. But I'm like, no, that's exactly why they should because – they don't exist in a bubble, and this, yeah. this whole idea of like I only buy JDM luxury is nonsense. You know what I mean? Like people, people do weird cross shopping, and like the person is like, you know, I, I can afford to spend a hundred grand on a M five or not M five a, a, a X five. Well, like, the X six came out three years later, yeah, with the same fucking body style, and it had a six cylinder, yeah. a, a V eight, and, and a an crazy V eight, yeah, yeah, and, a, and that was an amazing car, and like. Yeah. They're help, you know, and like we won't do a V8, we won't do a rear drive platform, and it's like your competitors are, and like you mm-hmm. know, it's like y- y- you got to wake up to it. Even Lexus woke up to it. You yeah. Know? yeah, they're the last V8 brand. Yeah, <laughs> them and Chevy. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, is that because yeah. Lexus has the benefit of Toyota's truck program and SUV program, which are rear wheel drive I don't, or rear biased? I don't think doesn't? so. Be- no, well, no, I don't think so at all because. Those those Lexus platforms, the the V eight, those are have nothing to do with the trucks in it. Nothing to do with the trucks. Yeah, the, I heard that they're going to do an SUV off of the LS platform. It hasn't materialized yet, but I was told they will do a three row off of that platform. Very, but they they probably just actually use the well, they're you know they're doing the land. They're hoping their LX six hundred does everything for the brand. You know, they really want that to be. The one thing, but no, it's just they. Somebody at Lexus made the decision. Like Mercedes exists, BMW exists, Audi exists, Cadillac exists. They offer V8 rear drive. Audi doesn't offer rear drive, but you know they have right. Quattro. Yeah. Like if we're gonna compete, we're gonna compete. Whereas Acura just won't make that. They can't make that jump. They yeah, got that's rid of the true. RLX they they the do RLX. not commit. To yeah. uh, really competing with a, with a competition, I mean, and it, it, their cars are solid, and if you just drive one, you go, yeah, okay, this is this is all right. But if you then try to cross shop it, it's tough to find an instance where it's actually the winner. And then if you look at well, who's moving the most metal? Not to bring them up, but like the Model Three, the Model Y, you got these electric vehicles. Like the Acura doesn't have one. Mm-hmm. Cadillac has one. Mercedes has a. Do you drive a Lyric or whatever? You I have? haven't driven the Lyric yet. No. Or do I they won't. exist? Yet? Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, okay. I just have. I just, we should. We should try and get yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I, I have. I drove the Escalade V. You know, which yeah, is which, which is, is the loudest vehicle. Yeah, which is a completely dumb fucking car. It sadly kind of is. Yeah, it's stupid. Yeah, it really is. But because it's loud. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, loud. like how often you know you got. I drove the I drove the regular Escalade. Right. Which is four hundred and fifty five horsepower, whatever it yeah, is, yeah, like four sixty eight. Yeah, like and 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 when I drove it, I used between ten and thirty percent throttle the whole time. When do you then need? The extra power well, to use the... I never even used the second half of the fucking pedal with what I had. It was dumb. I, I had it at Pebble, and every time you'd like start the car, like I'm jumping from one event to the other, everyone turns around expecting to see like a Lambo, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's a white SUV. Yeah. And then like Ed Lowe had it, and he texts me. He's like, hey, um, I got neighbors. Is there any way that like, uh-huh. like to turn that off? And yeah. I was like, all caps, nope. <laughs> like, I think it was... What is it, the F-Type? One of the Jags had a quiet story. 
start option. They, they the put Jag. it in later. Yeah, they did. They put it in later. Yes, because yeah. I had the first year V8 rear drive. Yeah, it was, which, it was so I, I, re- this is, I remember Christian Seaball and I, he had a Hellcat. He had a, a Challenger Hellcat. And I had the F-Type uh, R. And we're sitting in our parking garage at work, revving the engines <laughs> just to see who's louder. We both had the windows down. And the Jag was louder yeah. than the fucking Hellcat. F-Type R's were loud. Loud. Yeah. Stupid. I got pulled over twice because the guy assumed I was doing something wrong. And I'm like, yeah. I was just driving. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, we on our last show, we talked about this Hyundai Elantra N. Did you hear about this? Yes, the guy we, got refed with a yes. stock exhaust and apparently f- and and failed the ref. Yeah. So the drive reported. Did you see this, Zach? No, I got an answer from Hyundai, but we can go. Oh, to you first. did. Yeah. Well, maybe we should just go to the source. We'll tell the whole story. Okay. In case people miss it. Guy, if you didn't hear this, a guy was driving a Elantra N in California. He got pulled over. Northern California. Northern California. <laughs> he got pulled over. And cited for having an exhaust that was too loud. It was the stock exhaust, stock car, brand new Elantra N, and he had it in. I forget if it was sport or track. But he had it in end mode. In end mode, I, the, which is the, 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 which is the burble yeah. tune mode. Yeah, which it's, is yes, it's loud. It yeah. is loud. Yes. Okay, so he got sent to the ref. According to the drive, he went to the ref. And the ref tested it wrong. Yes. The ref made him put it in a mode. Yes, where it would fail. Where it would fail. Yes. Whereas the actual SAE standard is that you have to test it in a mode that will Pass. stay in that mode with a restart, right. a cycle. If you put the car in end mode, you then turn it off, it sit, starts, turn it back on, it, it goes back to normal mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In which case, that mode will pass. So, so they tested it in the wrong mode. And he then said, well, you have to take this car back to the dealer and have them, quote, fix it or get rid of this mode or something. No, that's right. They wanted him to modify the stock car, which <laughs> yeah. is yeah. absolutely Which absurd. is insane. So in the last show, we we had less information than we have now. Yeah. Zach reached out to Hyundai. If, if I can before Zach yeah. talks. So I just did, uh, you know, we did an episode of Spike's Car Radio, and we had Zuckerman weigh in. Which is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> and what he was, was Zuckerman's just, opinion? He was just like, I'm not looking for a new client, but if this kid wants to contact me, he's like, <laughs> yeah. he's like that ref. <laughs> you know. Well, our, our opinion was that if this is indeed a systematic failure on Hyundai's part, then punishing this one person exactly. is absolutely the wrong choice. Right. There's an implied warranty and all that. Absolutely. My only thing would be, did the, because you know, a lot of guys did this with like the Z06s, and you remember this, you remove the baffles in the exhaust so it always starts up in crazy pants mode and was it possible that this kid did that i don't know if he did possible. i think it's more likely he just hit track button to drive around oh possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, but yeah. not what the claimed well, yeah. not what the claim says yeah, yeah. Right. no if, but it's also like like the cop is is in the wrong of like, course you could give the guy a ticket for being too loud and you just say put it back in normal mode and then you know i don't know if the kid had the wherewithal to say well i was in loud mode listen to this yeah well that, uh, yeah uh, and then, but the ref is also like a hundred percent wrong. the ref yeah. is a hundred percent wrong yeah so zach so heard back from Hyundai. information first uh, he got a no comment through two days ooh, ago zach well, they got said they're gonna check with their team and then uh, a, a person uh matt cormier he emailed me and he says uh, he has a honda n and he read he looked at the manual and what the manual says because we were like what if the manual says you can only use track mode at the racetrack then obviously you you know maybe they'll get out of it that way so what the manual says is Please be aware and be mindful when using exhaust sound system in Sport Plus mode, as the pops and bangs can cause disturbance to your neighbors when using it in a crowded public area, closed parking spaces, and or residential area. We strongly recommend to use it with consideration. So it doesn't say anything Oh, that's like, very nice. It's it very, very nice, nice of them. It's, it it's like right. very like, uh, you know. It's like, hey, this isn't illegal, but like, don't hey, be a dick. I like, I like that the right. owner's manual boils down to, hey, don't be an asshole. Right. Right. Don't, don't point this weapon at your neighbor. I mean, you can, but please don't. So, okay. Uh, okay, that's the first that's thing. Very so funny. That's very But also, that's a bunch of bullshit. Go ahead. So Hyundai's reply. Please don't set off car alarms in parking lots <laughs> right. for recreation. Hyundai's reply is, uh, Hyundai and vehicles as sold fully comply with federal regulations and are legal for sale and street use in all U.S. states. Yes. Hyundai is aware of this incident and is working directly with the customer to help resolve the issue. Okay. Yeah, that was Zuckerman's point. Which was, is the right answer. Zuckerman's yeah. point was like, Hyundai better get on top of this, yeah, bail yeah. the car out immediately, yeah. pay for a lawyer, 
pay to like go talk to the sheriff, talk yeah. to this ref. This is a PR or, black or eye. just buy the car back from the guy well, and give him a new car. That's the I mean, other thing. the last chance like, implied warranty. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, that I'm that, glad they're on it. Totally. I mean, they, it, they better yeah. be. But also, two days of silence is like it shouldn't take that. Well, long. I mean, I emailed the PR person and right. he was like, I need to check. I mean. They because were probably doing shit other than yeah. getting back to Zach. It's yes. not like look in my <laughs> in my diligence. mind. You know, I, I once heard. This, I'm the, not my, as important as you, John. No, no, no. no. To you, they what I was going to say was, I once heard. This is like this is like when I first started doing car stuff. I was like, I got to learn like what exactly it means when they say like a hollow rocker arm or whatever. I got to be like the most technical guy. And I remember it was the the, the Chevy Volt, and the, for some reason Brett Ver- Burke did a video where he's with the chief, well, not the chief, but a, a Volt engineer, and the guy's talking. And Brett stops me. He's like, ah, "You gotta understand. In my mind, the way it works is there's a wizard behind the wall <laughs> shooting electricity. <laughs> is that accurate?" <laughs> and so, like, that's the Jeremy Clarkson uh, way, yeah, right yeah, there. And yeah, it, and, and 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 so, like, I don't want to get into the. In my mind, I should say. PR sits around waiting for me to contact them, and I mean the royal we, to answer. They, they better be on top of this yeah. instantly. Two days for a response, unacceptable. <laughs> this could be the problem. Well, I'm glad it's they're handling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and well, the, they didn't say what they're gonna do. No, they didn't. But it's but they're helping the customer, and they said basically what they said is no, this car is legal. Yeah. And what the There's, cop was saying is that this person had done something illegal and that but, he's like, implying that the car has an illegal mode, which it does not. But what a hard-on cop. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. that guy. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, and also, like, in an Elantra N, like, it's it's loud, but it ain't, and come on, man. Bro, pick a Harley. Any Harley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point, yeah. I can give you a list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I know. mean, pick a Hellcat. Any yeah, Hellcat. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, doesn't yeah. matter, but. Yeah, it's, I don't I mean, know. we it's, just we just had one at uh, at Performance Car of the Year, and. A and Hellcat? The, no, no, no. Oh, uh, the Elantra. Yeah, that's it. And, uh, and if you put it in fucking Pops and Bangs mode, Motherfucker's loud. Is I mean, no, not gonna lie. Like that's a loud car. Like, but <clears throat> yeah, the shit's not illegal, right? It's not well, illegal. That, that's it's, it's a legal yeah. car. Like, yeah, we and, all know and, how the and, rules and work. The kid had it in obnoxious mode. And you can find him for that, but you can't impound his car because there's nothing wrong. You with You can't the car. ref somebody for a stock car, right? And then you can't fail them at the ref. For that's the stock crazy car. part. That's and that's like why why why? Because they're just opening themselves up to a civil suit. Like why would you do that, dude? There's because it's California police. Well, California no. police are so good at getting sued and losing. <laughs> they are the best. You want to talk about a fucking well, they department know they, they know that wastes our taxpayers' money fucking getting sued for fucking up? It's California police departments. Yeah. They're the best at it. Yeah, fair enough. The best. By the way, did you guys hear about this? You know how, like, uh, if you want a certain license plate and, and, you know, custom plate and they can reject it on moral grounds? Mm. That's out the window. There was no a, more moral grounds. There was a First Amendment. Can I drop f bombs on my license plate? Yes, now? Oh, yes, really? you can. Not only that, not only no that, way. Misha on his blue um, uh, BRZ, he got blue cocky. He has the plate. Blue wow. cocky. B L U K A K E. He's got no blue cocky. Way. And I was like, I can't believe this is true. And then somebody told me, like, yeah, there was somebody brought up. Was, uh, brought no up more as morals. First, oh, no God. more morals. So you can get whatever you want. Oh, I can't. You can that's get zero amazing. fucks. But do it right now that's because amazing. everyone's doing it. See, that's upside. No morals. Downside. It's going to be. It's going to register bad. your car in California. <laughs> well, I never, I never tried because my wife wouldn't let me. But I, when I had the Fiesta, I don't know if you guys listen to Howard Stern, but I wanted to get Fist Fest, F S T F E S T. So like Fiesta Festival, but Fist Fest because yeah. like, how funny is that? That's I, very I, yeah, I, no one a, a, a dirty plate that you can explain away. Yeah. Is the best. Is the great blue cocky? You can't. Blue really. cocky is great. I mean, I had <laughs> on my I had a, on my Cobra back in the day. I had make you poo, <laughs> which was awesome because yeah. I was like, oh, it was a uh, it's makeup zero zero. Right. I I've started a makeup business. And well, on my Fox body, I had the IRS. Well, the IRS is my favorite of all time. But Camisa famously wanted to get. Um, uh, fruit basket for his for oh, his right, cabriolet, the and they rejected it. And then he actually apparently 
actually got business cards printed up and registered the company. And he's like, no, we're a Fruit <laughs> Basket no, the delivery. registered a Fruit Basket LLC. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and they still rejected it. But now, I don't know if he knows this, he can get Fruit Basket. Oh, he which should. Is, he's got to register it immediately. He which should. Is, which is really good. They're going to, you. I mean, I, I assume you saw on my Instagram my startup video for my Porsche today. Uh, yes. It's, I mean... People, I, some people are very supportive. I, I think the ratio maintains 90-10, support versus against. Who's against my, it? People who don't understand why someone like me would buy a pink Porsche. It's not pink, it's frozen berry. I agree. I mean, yes, and, and that's also, correct. First of all, pink's a great color. Also, fucking who cares? Yeah, it's pink, awesome. I, I mean, I love pink. Yeah, there yeah. Is, I can't think of anything better than someone who looks like me. <laughs> a Jew who looks like they would have marched in Charlottesville, driving a hairdresser's car in pink with a monster race motor in it. Yeah. Is the best fucking real world troll that there is. Yeah. And it's all, like you said, who cares? I, that's well, just weird. I mean, I who guess. Who cares? Yeah, Commenters. Yeah. No one really in the world cares. Right. But like, <laughs> right, yes. In the real world. We, cosmically, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And oh, I have to give a fucking shout out to my homie Peter Nam, Gunther uh, oh, Works, yeah. Vor Steiner, the, the CEO yes. of Gunther Works. I've been texting with him all day. He yes. saw my, my startup video and he was like, dude, that shit looks fucking fucking nuts i can't wait and then i was like and he was like let me send you some carbon and i was like i don't need any carbon but do you have or make the gt4 side scoops oh because the gt4 has bigger side scoops the spider has those shitty plastic ones right and he said i do and if you get me the paint code i'll fucking do them up for you and so so guess what i looked it up do you know what the paint code is for frozen berry metallic? I would have no idea. Twelve M four T. It looks like Matt. <laughs> it looks a lot like fucking Matt. Right. So I think they did it for me. That's what oh, I'm saying. You got, there's your vanity simulator. So so so, uh, uh, so, so, so uh, uh, shout out to Vorsteiner slash Gunther Works. They're gonna get me the carbon side scoops. I want to uh, see painted, it, the, but it'll look like a GT four. But it, they don't say GT four on them. I want to see a frozen berry Gunther. Oh, that'd be that would fucking be, that sick, new turbo. It? Have you did? By the, the way, the did turbo. You, did you look at it? Yes. Did it's you get a banana? Did you get the deep dive? Of I it? looked at it and I saw I saw Gamroth up there and I talked to him about it. The Gunther Turbo is going to be bananas. So, did you look at just by any chance? And anyone walk you through the rear diffuser? I got a brief. I got okay. a thirty the, second. The, the rear diffuser, which is very aggressive, it goes all the way to like your knees. It, it is, goes way forward. It, way forward. Yeah, yeah. It's like in, in there, like the pack, packaging a rear engine turbo with this diffuser was like the most challenging thing we've ever done. Yeah, no, these guys are not fucking around. No, not at the, all. That, this motor, uh, this oh. car looks beautiful. The car, it, it's, it, called, it's, it's called the Tornado. It's the uh, the Gunther Works uh, turbo yeah. car. Oh, look at the diffuser, but it goes the all it goes is way. Fucking sick. And again, there's a, there's an air cooled, so you need a lot of room in there to, yeah. you know, for intercoolers. It's an air cooled, seven hundred horsepower. I can't uh, wait turbo. to drive it. It's going oh, to be fucking it's gonna be cool. So good. It's going to be so good. Yeah, those look guys they know how to build a car. They, re- they weirdly they really, really do. Really like I mean, because right out of the gate they were it's very, great. It's a very nice car. Yeah. and you heard about they did that. Um, I've driven all. I drove the red one. Yeah. And red then one I drove the green one. Green the red one. one was a little scruffy, but the, the green one yeah, yeah, yeah. was great. The Speedster was great, except I froze my balls off. Froze. Not as much as Zach. I froze. Well, I, I handed I you the car. Yeah. At, I didn't tell at Zach. Zuckerman's house, I, I didn't tell Zach about the lack of heat. <laughs> I didn't expect the heater to be broken on a oh, 500, 700. It wasn't it's not broken. It's not, there's it no exist. heater. <laughs> oh, right. I, Sorry. To be fair, I, I, we exchanged the car at Zuckerman's house. And I, I called Matt, and I'm like, bring a sweater. <laughs> like, it's fucking... Because <laughs> it was, really cause that was cold. a cold December. It was year. cold. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, no, this thing's just... It's just... It's, it's just very, rad. very cool. Yeah. Those Did guys you hear about the, 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 the... Whatever they called it. The Laguna Seca Hill Climb? Yeah, it looked cool. He, he, he did... Uh, Pat Long yeah. beat, like... For instance, uh, La Ferrari by yeah. four seconds, yeah. Whoa. and beat the the Lucid Sapphire with the Stig driving. Yeah. Ben was driving it, yeah. by like four seconds, which is yeah. The cars in you, the, you in, can't just say not spoke. in the turbo, no, in, in the, the Speedster, in the Speedster, in the Speedster, in the, yeah, in the which Speedster. has no aero, yeah. no glass, but like you can't just be like, oh, they were on slicks. It's like okay, slicks will add a second on a two mile course. Were they on slicks? Yeah, they were on slicks, on but, slicks. but first of all, no one checked any other tires. Second of all. 
that's like a half mile hill climb. They're going from basically like the the, the middle of the no, front. No, that's straight. very fast. It's insane to beat a LaFerrari. I don't care if you're on two slicks. Like, yeah, you know, like, that's fast. That's nuts. Yeah, it's. I'm it, stoked on this turbo, and the orange looks nice. Oh, I know. The I mean, they really looks, do the, the paint. orange looks very good. Yeah, they I'm, know how to paint a car. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's it's and and, and also and I, I don't want to ever say this really, but like Peter couldn't be a nicer guy. He is. You know what I'm guy. saying? No, yeah, but like, great. you know, like I, I know lots of people who own lots of things and like, yeah, I support him. But Peter's like legitimately a nice guy. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Yeah. He's so. Fucking M4T. Imagine that in Frozen Berry. The turbo. It'd Dude. Be sick. Dude. It'd be sick. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Well, then you'd have to get a cool like uh, uh, contrast, contrast stripe. Contrast stripe. You would do um, uh, Ruby Stone. Oh wow! Frozen right? berry with a the ruby, ruby stone, stone stripe. stripe. Yeah, that would be aggressive and awesome. Okay, we need to find an eccentric gazillionaire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, we know you don't like cars, but trust us. I got to text Rogan. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> there you go, Segura. Yeah, yeah. time to spend yeah. some money, baby. Segura, because <laughs> it's been two months. Because because I saw yeah, Rogan. I saw That's Rogan's Ruby star. Ruby Stone Ruby is star, the, yeah. sorry. I saw Rogan's Gunther. And the it black. Was, it was pretty yeah. subtle. It wasn't yeah, like, yeah, it was, yeah. It was black, like black with a little red. Black with some red, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty. Although he did he did say he was happy with it, though. Well, yeah, I mean, how do you, how would you not I be? would be very happy with I'd the be Gunther. Fucking super but this one is like just with turbos, bad banana, shit. Bananas. Bad yeah, shit. Very excited. And it's like, it's like again, it's like, I think, you know, 700 on race fuel, like six something on pump mm. gas, which is like. You know, my car has to run race gas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to run 98. Yeah, I got to run. Big deal. There's oh, like, I got to throw a little, just a little extra juice in there. There's a co- are there any around here? I, I have no idea. But no, I I just buy the stuff. Oh, okay. There's it's yeah yeah. The it's Rick Rick octane said booster. Yeah, boost tain. It's going to yeah. cost me six bucks a tank. That's to go actually from ninety way cheaper to, than going out to the valley. It's and one buying, gallon at yeah. fucking California prices. I just got to. But that's really cheap. Yeah yeah. Oh, I mean, that's great. You know, and that that's enough. Okay. Cool. Pay the cost to be the boss, bro. If I got to fucking run six bucks a fucking boost tain. Six it. bucks a tank, which is nothing. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? By the way, I, your gas station here is still the most expensive gas. Well, so in you the know nation. what happened? So, so right, the one across the street from WCCS here, yeah. is the most expensive gas station in Los Angeles. Do you know why? No, because they opened a giant Amazon warehouse right there, uh, and every day the they trucks. fill up two hundred fucking trucks. And this dude is smart, and he yeah. goes, "I'm gonna get that Bezos cash, yeah, yeah, even yeah. if it's the only customer I got." Yeah, he's the start his own diesel. Program. Just make the no, diesel. No, they're not diesel. They're they're uh, fucking. Uh, uh, Gas uh, transits. Uh, oh, eco, transits. Uh, what, yeah, eco transits. Booster. Yeah. Well, you know, Rivian's going to fuck up his business model. I know. I've seen those. Well, he'll those... change his prices. Right. If you want, I mean, if you happen to be in the area at WCCS, yeah. if you go a half a mile up Centinella, a yeah. $1. twenty a gallon cheaper. Yeah, no. Yeah. I was just laughing because no, even, it's insane. Like, I live next to one Chevron that's like ludicrous prices compared to the one that's, again, a half mile away, mm. which is in the fours and fives. This right. one's in the sixes. Yeah. But like, this was like seven. No, this was 780. <laughs> 780. It's like they're fucking. Who are you kidding with that? Uh, that's no, amazing. yeah, we don't fill up there. That's yeah. dumb. I was just like, yeah. I was like, still, they're still doing. This? No, but I was, but 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 if you go by there at yeah, 9:03 yeah, yeah. a.m., right, every pump has a gray Got Amazon it. van. Okay, so smart. So every yeah. hour on the hour, good for him. Yeah, there's a gray Amazon van at every okay. single well, pump. Good for him. Yeah, take, it's, the, take I, the That's, money. that's yeah. that dude's hustle, and I'm not going to knock yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that Bezos money. Yeah, straight up. Sure. Tax those motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hard, bro. Well, the problem is that you know they they just pass it back around. Right. You and me. No, they don't. Like Free delivery. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> They fuck up some other small business that you don't know about. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Shout out to bookshop.org. There you go. I buy my nice. books from bookshop.org. Nice. Bookshop. I just got I got Alanis King's uh, The Rich Energy book. I'm very excited oh, to, cool. to tear Oh, cool. I got, into you know, one. I got to stop by. I just, I'm so used to, I've been buying books on Amazon for two decades. I got to get off of it. Go to a local bookstore. It's good I know. For it. I just, it's one of those things where I'll be like in the car and they like, you know, NPR is like, there's this new books on, on on you know the David Higgs or whatever oh, his name is. It's like, so the easy. Higgs boson. I'm like, <gasps> and I just it's buy too it. Too easy. I know. Yeah, it's, it is. But like, I got the book. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's it's easy and it's order the new book on how reading to buy is better than not store. reading. But if you can <laughs> support your no, you're totally right. And I, and I love going to bookstores. And I and I actually I take I take my kid to bookstores as much as I can. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's, it is the bookstore in Venice, Small World Books. They have a bookstore cat. I yeah, love it. I mean the bookstore last bookstore cat's last, name. I think it's the last Page. bookstore. 
page. Genius. Last bookstore downtown LA. Great. Oh yeah, I love that one. It's great. If I'm ever downtown, I go there. Yeah. Yeah. Last yeah. bookstore is awesome. Phenomenal. Uh, let's go to the people. Ah. We have uh, we have about 25 minutes left, and then I have a hard out. I'm sorry. Oh, that's I'm, fine. I'm I'm, 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 I'm enjoying my, myself. This is my third podcast today, so I'm. You, know, you did. You did. Uh, I did the inevitable, inevitable, and you did spike. And I did spike, Jesus and I came Christ. here, and I drank way too much coffee. So mm. this bourbon is literally. Mm. I would be sleeping. This sounds counterintuitive. I would be asleep on the table if it wasn't for the bourbon. I was. I, you know when you get over caffeinated and you're just like can't do anything yeah. like I was talking to Zach and I literally just walked out of the room it was weird he like <laughs> sat down in the chair and he just looked at the wall and he's like I drank too much coffee and I was like you need an outlet but I have to edit and he was just like <sighs> and then he left <laughs> <laughs> yeah I just I've left. been there yeah. I've definitely been there uh, okay get to the Patreon of course patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast get our show ad free uh, ask questions of our guests watch the live stream and of course get an extra ninth show every month let's go to it mike manillo says if the price were the same nd2 miata or nd1 with boost i can't even comment and i and it, the the third one the the the, the, the first off the price is not the same right it will never be if it's not if it's the same in a purchase it's not the same in maintenance yeah i I don't, I don't know how to answer this guy's question other than I drove an NA Miata with the Gen 2 steering rack. Yeah. That was really cool. Huh. That was Neat. really cool. Yeah. I it, thought there was a massive difference for the ND2. That engine is really, really nice. They made some significant updates. And if you can afford an ND2, I would get the ND2. But I, I would just get the, I would get the, the what is it, the NC? The, the third gen Miata, that's the one I love. Yeah. I know it's look, smiling and all that, but I think it's the best driving. That's okay. You're allowed. Yeah. David has a hard question for Johnny. Why did best driver's car turn into performance vehicle of the year? And is it a coincidence that it's so similar well, to Road and Track's <clears throat> performance car I, of the year? <laughs> yes. I have many answers to this question. And it, one is we should have copyrighted of the year back in <laughs> 1940 fucking nine when we launched car of the year. Uh, and you guys got to performance car of the year, so we just do performance vehicle. Um, but we've we we had SUVs and best drivers car for a long time. Um, we didn't enforce the copyright, so there's North American car of the year, which chaps our hide, and there's no way out of it. Um, and why did it change from best drivers car? Was just because somebody you know new CEO, and he's like, why do we have car of the year, truck of the year, SUV of the year, and best drivers car? It makes no sense. Why don't you yeah, call it of the sense. year? And so we we changed it, and there's no conspiracy. The other the other thing was the way we did best drivers car was we were at a max twelve vehicles, and by doing performance vehicle of the year, we opened it up to like twenty two vehicles. So it's just like is that one test twenty two vehicles? Yeah, that's a lot of fucking cars. SUV of the year this year was fifty. Oh, what? Yeah, I didn't go, but it was that sounds, fifty. That sounds awful. It's hard. It's dude, those are. It's cool the way we do it, and I know everyone thinks we just get paid by OEMs, but we don't. We actually test these things. Those are there's two very tough days when you have to bring a field of fifty down to ten. Fifty is it's yeah. tough. It's you're just you just don't get you just work for two days. Peak Cody was uh, was ten cars and uh, fourteen uh, riders, and it, it's you know it's fun. It's it's you know it's a good time, but it's just it's a lot of yeah moving parts, and it yeah. can be very exhausting. I can't imagine fifty. Fifty is not, I've done I've done I've done, I never did I think I did forty nine one year, and it's just you know you're driving twenty five cars a day, and yeah. yeah, it's a it's a two or three mile track, but you still got to do that's a lot, and you got to take notes because if, yeah. if you don't take notes by the twenty second, you don't remember what you drove. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be disciplined. You have to do it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Oh, this is a weird question because no, it's, the fine. answer is so obvious. That's Nick okay. McRae, did Johnny back out of his Cybertruck order and buy the Rivian because the Rivian was the better choice or because it was actually available? Uh, Nick, one is real. <laughs> one is a movie prop and one is an actual vehicle you can buy today. It's not yeah. a movie prop. It's a marketing so, expense. So, you know, I, I, I put down, like I think a lot of people do this, I put down a lot of deposits on a lot of cars because – even though it's kind of stupid because you're not earning interest on the money, you can typically get your deposits back at any time. And I was like, oh, Cybertruck, that looks cool. I like the way it looks. I put the $100 deposit down, which is bullshit. Um, and interest and rates suck, so, you know. Doesn't, yeah, whatever. Hundred. Yeah, I still have that deposit. I have not done anything with it. Uh, if, you yeah. want, if you want to buy it from me for $101, it's yours. 
Um, I bought the Rivian because I drove it 1,850 miles off-road and was like, this is the best product I've ever driven. I can't believe it's real. And I just put a deposit down, and then I wanted my own off-roader. I was about to pull the trigger on a Lexus GX, and my wife, for whatever reason, was like massively against that car. She's like, no, 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 no. And I bought the Rivian, and I, I love it. I've never owned anything better, and it it's I, I just I'm in love. The second part of the question, which is gone, but like – I loved I I loved the TRX and I we happened to have a, the TRX following us when we drove cross country and like man Rivian's better in every way and yes the TRX is very loud it's not a particularly great noise and it's funny how loud the Ram is compared to how slow it is when it's against the Rivian yeah it, and it's just really like why are you making all this noise <laughs> just be faster fuel into noise yeah fuel and, into noise and it's again yeah so it's so the Harley protocol yeah and I I just my family really likes the Rivian, and we have Fair. so many uses for it. I love it. Uh, Chris Limbright. Okay, we're not going to do all of these. We're going to pick the first <laughs> the first three of four. If your typical electric car is like driving a microwave, what food cooking process would a Porsche GT3, a 60s muscle car, and an E46 M3 be? I'm so lost on this. The muscle so car is a barbecue. Right. Associ- yeah. <laughs> muscle car is a barbecue, low and slow. GT3 yeah. is a sous vide. A GT3 Precise. could be a sous vide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. E46 M3 is going to be a uh, uh, a hand a hand beater. Uh, like a hand blender. Yeah, like it's a okay. hand blender. Helpful, but... High revving, precise. You mean making soup? Like yes. One of those? Yes. A hand mix. A hand blender. Okay. No? I... Or a, uh, uh, I would go with hand mixer, but you have to Vitamix. spin it by hand. A Vitamix those last way longer than the E forty six. I have a Vitamix has never broken. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Anonymity says recent automotive journalist layoffs suck ass, and the auto shows are ghost town. What is the best way forward for the automotive journalist? Look, uh, this is uh, something Angus McKenzie beat into me when I got hired at Motor Trend, and I, I think you would agree with this, is like build your own brand. Yeah. Um, because I know it's, it's, it's weird, and I think it's, it has more to do with like just like Midwest values, but there's a lot of our colleagues that are great, amazing at what they do, da, 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 but they really want to not ever stand out. They never want to be pointy. They don't want to like – have their name necessarily associated with a harsh opinion. They use we, we drove the car, we feel this, we feel that. Whereas you and I have always been very like, I feel this, I did this. Mm. And we've always kind of been very extroverted and, and built our own brand. And, and uh, I think that's the key is that you kind of yeah. have to be, be an influencer. bigger than the outlet you work for if, that's, if you work for an outlet. My add on to that would be to go where the audience is. It's That's, something I'm unfortunately not willing to do anymore. I was willing to do when I was younger. Go to fucking TikTok. Like, <sighs> I don't, I hate it. I don't use I, it. I haven't done it. But like, you want fucking views? And this go is, to TikTok. This is probably where you and I are failing is I was going to do it and, 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 my, and Motor Trend wanted me to do it. They were pushing me and a friend of mine is an FBI agent, literally an FBI agent. And he said, you might as well just mail your debit card to China <laughs> with, the, with the pin because that's what putting TikTok on your phone does. They have yeah. everything. Yeah. My, and, and so I, I was like, I, ah. I, 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 I buy that. I, I get it. But that's not even the reason for me. Oh. It's just like I'm old and don't want to do a new platform. From I know. Scratch. And we and, missed the boat probably. Yeah. To, and so, to millions. And it's not. And like, you know, I'm not. I don't. I. My goal now is to master the medium that I like to consume. I'm I'm right. probably best known for videos and second best known for podcasting. But what I really like doing the best if I had to pick an activity is is writing. Yeah. I, I like doing it the best and I like I like writing the best, podcasting the second best, and making videos a third. And videos because it's what suck. I like to videos I don't like making videos it's that much. It's the worst. It, yeah. And it just is what it is. It, but it's so funny you said that because I, I uh I'll be quick, but like I, I recently started therapy, uh, long story short, and like one of the things is like, you know, it's like this 
I'm a fraud. I have imposter syndrome, like this, that, and the other. And one of the things we talked it's about. Funny, that's how I feel about you, too. Thank okay. you. <laughs> yeah, you and all the commenters that are watching right now. But, like, you know what I mean? But, like, one of the things that I decided after some therapy was, like, I'm really going to, like, slow down on my writing, meaning I'm going to, I'm going to, like, I'm not going to turn it in just to be in on time to meet mm. the embargo. I'm actually going to do a good job. And since I've been Read doing through that, it a few more times. And, and since I've been, and I actually, I had a story that I waited six months because I just, it wasn't right. And it, luckily it wasn't a new car that I drove, like the very last Countach ever made. Oh, yeah. The, I remember and, that. Yeah. And I've gotten more positive feedback yeah. on that than anything I've done in my career. Yeah, reflection is good. And, yeah. like, I've, <laughs> there's been a few times where I, I've, I, you know, I won't turn, I'm not turning in first drafts, but I'll turn, I'll write something, I'll read through it, I'll sleep on it one night, read through it again, turn it in the next day, and then a day later, oh, yeah. I'll read through what I sent again. I went, oh, no, 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 don't even, don't touch that. I, and then I, and it's like, I now have to sit on some shit for at least three, four, five days and read through it. 15 or 20 times before I'm okay sending I'm, it I'm in. notorious for doing yeah. exactly that. Like yeah. you asked a lot of my editors where I'll be like, I'll turn something in to meet a deadline. Let's say like, you got to get it in by 5 p.m. today and then I'll get it in and then they'll wake up with like seven emails from me like, at, you <laughs> know, 11.45, ah, use this version, throw that one out. And they're like, we already started editing process. I'm like, oh, you know what's happened to me a couple of times? They'll, they'll give me a deadline for sending something in. I'll fucking send, I'll get it in on time, yeah. right? I'll do the thing I do where I'll uh, the next day I'll be like no 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 don't use that use here's here's the next revision, and then we'll be at the Tuesday morning meeting they'll be like, Farah's the first one to turn in an article for this month's issue and I'm like what the fuck why <laughs> you can put me under this well, pressure you're a very punctual the, person and I'm, I'm the first person to turn in anything I, I, god damn it <laughs> I mean if I can critique myself I'm starting as I age I'm starting to miss deadlines and, mm. and it's it's. Something's got to give, I guess. And yeah. And I know it's a bad thing, but it's, it's happening. That only kind of, I mean, my yeah. To go back to the person's question, go to your audience. You know, the reason I was on YouTube for so many years is that's where the people are. No, oh, I know. And now yeah, with yeah. podcasting, that's like, that's where the people are. It's fortunate that, I don't know, I can't speak for Zach, but I really enjoy doing this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like talking to smart people about topics in a long format. But I also like I love writing because that's what I like to consume. I, yeah. I read. Yeah, and so. and I, again, to me, it's more. I, I, podcasting and writing are about as. Much, how do I put this? I take a lot more pride in my writing than I do in my podcasting. If that makes mm. any sense. But mm. like this well, is writing's at your pace. It's slower. You can edit things, change things, turns a phrase, all that stuff. Yeah, but and real quick, not to blow too much smoke up your ass, but like there's a reason I've been on this show for 12 years, and there's a lot of podcasts I've done once. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, or f however long, how long I've been doing this? 12, 13. 2011, years? we started. 2011. Yeah, yeah you're okay. you're you're in early. I remember yeah. doing your living room in in mm -hmm. uh, down the street. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, Hunter Sands says, "Which, what vintage race at Goodwood would you like to race in, and with what car?" Oh well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to just Adrian uh, Newey. There's a type. guy who offered me to drive his mini. Uh, it is, uh, I think his, his name is Jason, and I'm blanking on his last name. And he's got like a mint green, mint blue. I mean, it's a weird colored mini, and it's like that one. Uh, I, I gave him a bunch of Zuckerman stickers and uh, like, yes, that's that's okay. the one. Do that. mini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like an OG mini racing mini. Yeah. And those, by the way, the, the mini races look race, fun. So they're it's bananas. Yeah. It's like you know, <laughs> it's just so and good. there's a lot of oversteer too. It's good. Oh, it's wild. Um, Andrew Stone says, Johnny, how do you reconcile your Packers fandom with Aaron Rodgers conspiracies and nonsense? So my wife, who's a big Eagles fan, had to live through Michael Vick dogfighting era. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and all I can say is, you know, you look for the positives, meaning <laughs> meaning uh -oh. when Michael Vick was going okay to the— over there? That went about as bad as it could have. When yeah, Michael Vick was going to the VD clinic, he would give the fake name Ron Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so I was Ron Mexico on a lot of farms for many years. That's funny. And, uh, you know, like, go pack go, baby. That's I'm pretty sure I sat next to Aaron Rodgers at the Burt Kreischer show at the Greek Theater. Yeah, you probably did. I think I did. You probably did. Yeah. I mean, look, we got mutual friends. You know, he, he was the host of Jeopardy. You and I are friends with Tony Q. 
Oh yeah. Um, I almost wound up at dinner with them, and you know, like I, I wish he would uh, say like, "Hey, get vaccinated." Medical science, good thing. Yeah. Sometimes people who play sports are dumb as rocks. What can you do? Uh, he's, you know, he's he can throw that ball, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sean Smith wants to know our thoughts on the GR Corolla. Uh, I don't know if you saw last uh, the the episode that went up this past Tuesday. Today. I talked about my experience with the GR Corolla. Didn't drive it yet. How is it? I drove the Marizo edition. Oh, minus the rear wiper. For, so it's got, yeah, yeah weight <laughs> reduction. Weight distribution. Weight, very <laughs> stupid weight reduction. Um, the, the short version is um, I was very impressed at Toyota's product. They're not fucking around. This is a performance car that rips. Um, it's a rally car. First and foremost, you can, you know, the fact that you can play with the diff and it actually makes it real adjustments, the fact that it makes this unbelievable amount of power out of three cylinders, it has excellent brakes that it's very hard to overheat, great seats, great shifter feel, sharp steering, so many great things about it. But mm. the Marizo edition was really stiff on the road. It was great on the track. It beat me up on the road. The sum of the weight reduction was dumb. Uh, you know, you, the rear windows don't go down, really. You oh, know, are you serious? Fifty thousand dollar hatchback. Oh, yeah. that's that's dumb. Yeah, kind of dumb. Oh, I, did, I didn't. I didn't read anything and, and about so, it. So, yeah. so I haven't driven the regular one. Okay. So, okay. So, you know, but it has. But the Marizo has the close ratio gearbox. It's got electric torque. It's got lightweight wheels. So, I, I have without driving the regular one, I would say that give me. One with a back seat and rear windows that work and a rear wiper, but also the close ratio gearbox and the lightweight wheels and the extra power. Well, that's good to hear because I, I tend to trust your opinions on cars. And there's not, you know, as you know, there's not a lot of our colleagues I 100% trust. Dude, on the track, it was rowdy. Yeah. And you just huck it and smash the throttle and fucking power through. But it's nice to hear you say a couple of the negatives because, like, I remember when the GR Yaris launched right. and people were like, it's the second coming of Christ. Yeah. And I'm like, and I remember Jethro was like, that's ah, okay. Right. He's like, but like, you know, it's it's really not as good as you're reading, you know. Right, and, right, and, right. And so it's nice to hear, because I've only heard like superlatives about right. how it's the greatest well, like car. For, look, for Toyota, yeah. it's fabulous. Yeah. It's a proper product built by people who really give a fuck and, and they didn't cut corners yeah and it's it's fast and, and it's by, engaging and by the way let props to toyota for even, even no matter how they rank like gr yaris gr corolla yeah uh the the 86 the 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 supra yeah and now super the manual like hey yeah that's i mean yeah the camera they're getting the camera but that's, they're getting there that's rad yeah like um Considering they had none of this yeah. uh, uh, five years ago, I hope that you can get the best things from the Marizo in the in in one that's usable also as a hatchback. And you probably won't be able to. But still, it's, it's yeah. cool. It's all. Uh, did you did you try Z06 yet? I haven't. Driven okay, it. I'm so behind. And I did. I hear it's rad. It's the fucking jam. I hear it's the best. Yeah, it's the fucking jam. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. it. You're. I mean, you're gonna get plenty of seat time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all coming up. It's. It's the fucking. And, and by the way, jam. Motor Trend. Just because the way we're pacing things, we've only driven the convertible, not not the non Z07. Mm. So I, I hear like. So I did Z07, and and I talked about it in last week's show, or, or the late yesterday's show, actually for us in the real world. Yeah. And and I was uh, a commenter accurately told me that what I one of the negatives that I described with the car because there's many many positives. It's yeah. fucking overwhelmingly excellent. Yeah. But on bumpy roads, the regular C8 Z51 has the, one of the best rides of any sports car on the sale today. Shockingly amazing. Shockingly ride. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The car with the Z07 package is pretty pretty stiff on the road. It's a yeah. track-focused package. Yeah. And they said the Z06 non-Z07 rides much closer to the regular Z51 okay. C8. So I'd like to try one of those and see how it is. Yeah, because the only person on staff who's driven the Z07 and the other variants was Scott Evans, and yeah. he was like just, I mean, gushing. No, but, the car's batshit. It's awesome. But we had we had the regular one in for testing. And uh -huh. like, even the convertible, which is you know heavier, it's a convertible. Yeah. Like the numbers were, were stupid. No, it's stupid fast, stupid. and it's great fun. It makes all the right and sounds. And the engine's as amazing as we assume. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, yeah. It's, Can't wait. Can't there wait. are very, f there are no disappointments yeah. with the Z06. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, 
I, I can't see <laughs> Colin's comment there, Zach. But Aaron no, says, Johnny, best bottle of bourbon for sipping under 100 bucks." I mean, I'm going to go back to my default answer, which is always, you know, uh, Old Forester 1920. However, you know what? I'll, I'll give him some new ones. Uh, Nashville Barrel Company. Uh, Nashville Barrel Company, they will have some great bourbons for under 100 Also, um, I'm, I'm blank. Oh, God. Pinhook. Pinhook. Mm. Um, they have some six and seven year old bourbons that are that are cast strength that are I think like you can actually order them via text, which is hysterical to me because they always get me because I'll get a text like, hey, for fifty nine bucks you can get this hundred and twenty proof bottle of bourbon, and I just say yes, and it shows up. Uh, Pinhook's pretty damn good most of the time, not always. Cool. Natural barrel, hundred percent time, super good, excellent. I hate to look at my watch, but I have oh, four yeah. minutes and I have a fucking serious hard out. So let's speed round, Colin. I don't have an answer for Colin's question. I'm sorry. I do. Uh, uh, yes, the, the performance is rad. Audi with, with 560 GT. horsepower with 602 horsepower. Total home run winner. It's it's, it's okay. the most R8 power you can get. Rear wheel drive. Okay, cool. Uh, Gunner Ray, interesting question, and I think we should uh, end on this one. Okay. Uh, Gunner Ray says that I said that a stock modern Civic should be able to hang with a Ferrari 308 on track or in the canyons, which is uh, accurate, I believe. I think a ha- Civic would outrun it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> How extreme would you have to go in a stock modern car if you wanted to keep up with an F40 or a McLaren F1 in the same driver, same conditions? I, I can't comment on F1. I, I, I still have never driven one, and, and I've, that's a lot of power and no weight. I would say an F40, boy, like, I, you know, like an M3 competition, I think, would beat up on an F40. Probably. In, in every single way. Uh, you know, Audi RS5 would probably be like. Yeah, I mean, I think an, I think like an RS3 would fucking probably hang with an F40. If if the F40 was on I mean, period tires actually, and not you're, you're, not modern even tires, modern tires, you're you're like the power of an RS3 is I think the same as a as, I think no, it's less. Double the it's tw- 400 in the RS3. It's 492. Is it 4? Oh, that's right, 492. It arrived earlier in the RS3. Yeah, and but the, the torque, gears, the gears. There's a yeah. there's a bunch more gears. You and it's probably drive. double the torque in the yeah. RS3. Yeah, yeah. right. It is yeah. 492. I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I think even tires, something like that, would probably walk in. Yeah, yeah but an like M- M2CS would probably easily hang Dude, with an oh, yeah. M2CS. Would, it, it, I had a, a, a Misha, you know Misha, mm-hmm. uh, chasing me in his uh, Performante. In, I was in an M2CS, and he's a good driver. Yeah. He wasn't hanging. M2CS is a very it is fast. ridiculous because the suspension fast. is so sophisticated. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I yeah. don't. It, I, it would not take a hundred grand a car. Yeah. to and keep up with an F40. That's not the point. I mean, you just look at the F40. No, of and course. It's like, yeah. And the in, the analog, you know, feels yeah. the yeah. sound. And also, the, you know this, like that car is probably actually under three, well under three thousand pounds. Yeah. And that's that's its own treat. You yeah. Just, you know, you just don't get cars. Modern cars are like the. The RS5 is over two tons. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's, no, cars yeah. aren't that light anymore. No. Um, thank you, sir. Yeah, man. It was I fun. appreciate it. Third podcast of the day. I apologize for not getting to the rest of the of the, uh, the, dis- the comments, but we we had a good one here. This Lindores, very really nice. Yeah. Very nice. Which might be pronounced like Lindores or yeah. something. But Whatever the it's fuck. Great. Who knows? It's great. Of course, Johnny's on Motor Trend. He's on Spikes Car Radio. He's got the inevitable podcast. Make sure you uh, you get it where you get your podcast. And um, yeah, baby, that's our show fun. for the night. Happy Yom Kippur. Yes, uh, have a good fast. <laughs> yeah, L'chaim. Good luck fasting. We're pounding whiskey. Yes, yeah. indeed. And uh, we will we'll be back here for the live people. We'll be back here tomorrow. Andrew Collins is in studio, uh, and we'll be chatting about something completely fucking different. Who knows? Good night.